bless you. Let our hearts be open to receive everything that you have. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Good evening everyone. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Greetings to all who are connected with us from around the world online. We honor you. We love you. Distance is no barrier in the spirit. Those outside, those inside, the Lord bless you. It's good to have everyone around again. For those coming for the first time, what a joy to have you in our midst. The Lord bless you and increase you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me just um, reiterate a few things before we get into the teaching of the night. It never tires me to keep reminding us, please pay attention. And there is a reason why I do this all the time. Because um, the impact of a person, please listen, and you know this is a school. So everything that is communicated can be applied in our lives, businesses, or whatever it is. It is very, listen, it is very important that whatever it is you find yourself doing, you make your assignment or you make, if it is in business, the products or the services very clear. Are we together? Um, in business, we call it branding. Branding is a system where you connect your products with the psychology of the consumers so that every time they see your logo or whatever it is, wherever, are we together now? They, so whenever they have a need, they know where to find it. Now, the same principle applies in ministry. As a man of God, as a pastor, it is important that there is clarity over your assignment and what the people should expect every time they are within the proximity of your grace certain things should happen to them and the assignment is upon every visionary leader to let the people know and you create that persuasion through repetition so that everyone who for instance comes for koinonia already registers in their heart that certain possibilities should be my experience are we together if I, please help me, Jimmy, with this water. Watch this. This is Nestle, right? This is water. Look up, please. And if I remove, if I peel up what is here, there's no way that I would know whether this originally came from them or not. Is that true? Someone can fetch water from a well and put it in this bottle and sell it. So, a system came up to standardize their product and they branded it by putting this. Are we together now? So, every time you want Nestle water, when you pick it, you search for certain things. If you don't find it there, then it's not Nestle water. Are we together? They pay people millions to advertise in such a manner that they help you to know what to check out in a product to know whether it is fake or real. Are we together? Now, the reason why many listen and learn, I share my heart with you because um, we are largely young people and God is helping us to rise. And one of the reasons why many people, many churches don't grow, many great people, great businesses never rise, is there is no clarity as to what their products are. People cannot come to, there's too much vagueness. That you are a man of God does not mean you can deliver everything. So, there must be clarity, excuse me, of the dimension of the grace of God that is communicated to you so that those who need that grace will know where to go to. Are we together? When Benihin comes to Nigeria or wherever he goes to, when you are going for a Benihin crusade, you don't expect a relationship. You don't expect some of the... You go there on wheelchairs, angry, expecting that pain to leave. 
you expect an impartation. Are we together? His consistency in the spirit has branded that dimension of the dealings of God in him. When you go to God's servant, Bishop Oyedeko, you expect certain things to happen to you. Are we together? So, it is my assignment, among other things, to keep reminding us of what we represent to the body. So that every time you come or invite people to come, they come with their heart fixed to expect certain dimensions of God. This is how you know whether you belong here. This is how you know whether you need what is there. If I'm thirsty, I don't need a chemist to buy drugs. Do I? Now, that does not mean a chemist is bad. But with respect to my hunger, a chemist is not necessary. Are we together? So that when you know what stage and what level you are spiritually, you know what materials to listen to. You don't just carry everything spiritual and say, because I'm listening. You don't grow that way. It has to be specific. Imagine a student who goes to every faculty, just travel around and receives lecture at will. He's always in every lecture, but there is no direction. Are we together? Today, he feels like being in the faculty of medicine. Next, tomorrow, he's in accounting. And then, again, he's in fine arts. You see him drawing, trying to construct a building. And that guy does it successfully for five years. Do you think he deserves a degree? No. He deserves congratulations for diligence. But not a degree. Because his pursuit is not specific. Are we together now? So, the first thing I want to remind us of is what we really represent to the body what what god has gathered us here this training that we keep investing ourselves and committing ourselves to week after week year after year to what end you are like a product that god is working on you should have an idea of what you should be like when he is done with you hallelujah praise the lord so that it will motivate you it will encourage you whether it is through the rain whether it is through the sun, you no longer with this understanding come to church as though you are doing maybe your colleague who invited you a favor or maybe because you are a worker. That understanding guides you and it supplies strength even when you are weak. You know that God is, I'm, I'm, I'm on a project. I will continue going. When a lady goes to make her hair in the salon, you know, she steps there and they show her different pictures. And she sees what she wants to look like and says, that's the style I want. Correct? And she never asks, how long will it take for this style to produce? She just knows that. Do you have the money? Do you have the patience? Yes. She sits down and for hours she's frowning and sweating but determined. Are we together? You will meet her and ask her a question and say, ah, my sister, you are still here? I traveled to Sabo and I'm back. She says, I mean, that's, that's, that's the demand of the style correct that's the demand of what the style at the end of it by the time she's beautifully dressed as soon as she steps out a brother is seen her he's like ah you mean you are the one you see that is the end product the brother never says you mean you stay this long he does not care how long all the brother is interested in is the end product the generations are not waiting for our training they are waiting for what we will be like nobody will forgive you for not healing the sick and say I'm still on training no whenever you approach them they think you have finished that means you must be diligent God is raising mighty men in this place God is raising people of power in this place he won't stop he won't stop Till we look just like him He won't stop No, he won't stop Till my life looks like him He won't stop He won't stop Till I look just like him He won't stop He won't stop For you may weep But he won't stop Till you look just like him and You may cry But he won't stop Till you look 
just like him Please don't stop, please don't stop Till we look just like you Please don't stop, Lord don't stop Till my life is like you Lift your voice in one minute and say Lord Never allow my tears stop you from going on with the training The truths that I may hear may challenge me But I refuse to stop Lift your voice and pray There is a generation that is depending on my diligence Shabakata bradakata palada basa Dande prakato sabra digede balada bash he said meditate on these things give yourself wholly to them that your profiting your profiting your profiting will appear unto all believe me this word of God works it may take time but you will look like him it may take time but when he's done with you he brings beauty and glory out of your life your life becomes nothing short of an awesome wonder you may not look like it now the Bible says, now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be like. Just give him time. Be patient with God. It, everything of value takes time. Everything of value takes time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So there are certain things we must always expect here. Number one, encounters. Koinonia has been designed by God. Our ministry to the body is to create a platform for people to have dramatic encounters with God. An encounter is an experience that makes a person real. When you meet me, you can say you have had an encounter. Because in meeting me, you will have the opportunity to have a closer look. You will talk with me. You will be able to interact with me. You will be able to understand my ideology. This is what an encounter is. So through the, the ministrations, through the worship, through the testimonies, and everything that we do, we seek to stimulate an atmosphere that brings encounters in the lives of people. It is my personal opinion that you are not a Christian if you have not encountered God. It doesn't matter how long you have been to church. If you have not had a personal encounter. We used to say it before. Now preachers don't say it. They just say, do you know God? And we know that God means everything to people. God is a bottle of minerals somewhere. God is a shrine somewhere. An encounter. They call it a personal encounter encounter you can have a corporate encounter but everyone needs a personal encounter an experience that makes Jesus real to you an experience that makes the life of God real to you there's no hope of turning back after an encounter it's not about trying it is impossible to want to opt to go back an encounter very important hallelujah number two the second thing that we represent to the body is a platform where an understanding of the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom is received. It is important to know that God has committed unto us the message of the kingdom. The message of the kingdom is the understanding of the principles of the kingdom that seeks to reveal to the believer his responsibility, the part he has to play as far as experientially enthroning Lord is concerned and then extending the influence of his reign. We have that assignment to be able to make men see, to bring people to an understanding where they understand that um, if we are to command victory in life, it will be on the strength of the mysteries, the principles of the kingdom. So this is a place of understanding. That's why you never hear people tell you oh, stories, stories here and there. We are 
concerned about you having the knowledge of the principles of the kingdom. That is the only basis for a victorious life. Emotions don't produce victory. Listen, listen. Emotions don't produce victory. There are so many emotional things happening in the body of Christ. People cry, they jump, and, and, and I'm not against all these things except for the fact that if they do not have life applicable kingdom founded principles, they are not going to produce results in the lives of people. And you know, the system of God is such that after a period of God investing in your life, you will expect fruits. He came and saw the fig tree and cursed it. Why? Because it could not produce. So if you claim to have been around the things of God at a point in your life, there should be evidences. Evidences. Something should start working. Everything cannot go bad. If everything is bad in your life, then something must be wrong. And you must seek to find out, not look for who to blame. You see that? Because that's what we do. We look for someone to blame. We look for demons to blame. And sometimes they are guilty, but not all the time. We look for parents to blame. We look for government to blame. In this place, we cultivate the spirit of responsibility. That if anything will ever change in your life, it's up to God and you. Not God alone, not you alone. So koinonia comes as the word that defines that experience. Partnership. It takes partnership between God and man for anything notable to happen. We're a very responsible people. We believe that my destiny and your destiny is not just in the hands of God to decide. Uh -uh. We have a role to play and that our assignment as individuals and as a people is to make sure that we are hands on on our own part of the partnership. Because the problem is usually from us, never from him. You've been faithful, Lord, through the ages past, always faithful. That is why your name is forever. That means if my life is not moving forward, listen, if my life is not moving forward, I will be stupid to blame God. Are we together? I must understand that God, his name is faithful. It's not an attribute he has. The Bible calls him in Revelations faithful and true. There is no shadow of turning in him. So if anything is wrong in my life, things are not working. I'm not reflecting the reality of the word of God. I must with all meekness take responsibility and say, look, there is something I do not know or there is something I have not understood. There is something I have not believed. The moment you assume the position of responsibility, you are ready for divine help. God will never come and stretch his hands towards a people who are not ready to take responsibility. Are we together? The third thing that God has anointed and assigned us to do is the ministry of signs and wonders. Listen, you must understand that the ministry of signs and wonders is way beyond the ministry of miracles. The ministry of miracles is largely limited to bodies and all of the signs and wonders um, are supernatural occurrences that challenge the belief systems of men and cause them to see the sovereignty of God displayed in the midst of the people. That's why you see certain things. They are not necessarily miracles. You understand? Someone can be shouting outside. I can tell you two people are going to shout right now. That's not a miracle. That's a sign and a wonder. Are we together now? Yeah. All of a sudden, supernatural occurrences begin to happen all kinds of strange demonstrations of the spirit i can be saying god is giving you speed and then you see people start running physically why are they acting out those things it's a ministry of signs and wonders when you understand this when you bring someone for the first time and the person is are you sure this guy is not a herbalist you tell him no 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 no, no. this is part of the call there is an anointing for signs and wonders very few people on earth have it many people have the anointing for miracles but not signs and wonders. He says, I will show signs in the heavens and wonders, blood, fire, and smoke. These are three mysteries. I will show signs in the heaven. Prophet Joel told us that it's part of what comes with the outpouring of the Spirit. So aside from healing miracles, aside from deliverances and all of that, signs and wonders, 
Meaning that when you come for koinonia, you expect the limitless dimensions of the Holy Spirit demonstrated without restraint. Anything can happen. I can be talking and all of a sudden someone is shouting and if you do not know that is part of the package here, you may be afraid. But when you know, when you hear someone shouting, instead of looking and saying, I hope this guy is not lying, you just say, God is here and he's here for me too. You see that? Yeah. Very important. When you understand these things, there are other auxiliary assignments, of course, the blessings of the kingdom, financial prosperity, the wealth of the kingdom, and so on and so forth. Everything God has sent me to do, everything God has sent us as a ministry to do, we are unapologetic about it. Why am I saying this? That means if I claim to be sent by God, and if I claim to be teaching you, and you are participating in what I am saying, it means if you are not changing to become what I claim God has asked me to do, something about my call and election must be questionable. If I claim God has called me to heal the sick and I pray for 100 people and not one person gets healed, I need to go back to God and say, Lord, something is wrong somewhere. Transformed lives are the, like the trophies. The Bible calls them the seals of apostleship. Right? So that you look at your life and say, my God, look at what God has done in my life. I came and I met Jesus. My life has changed. So he releases the anointing that is responsible to produce that result. That's why many of us are gathered. That's why the testimonies are here. And tonight will be no different in the name of Jesus. You will always learn something when you come to the presence of God. I'm, I'm, the goal here is not to make you aware. You must understand that beyond the words you are hearing, there is an anointing that backs it up. That anointing is what empowers you to perform. Otherwise, all I'm giving you is a lecture. It's an intelligent lecture. Because some of the things that I'm communicating, some of them are products of researches. The research does not have an anointing in itself. It just has information. But when that research is taken in the place of prayer something comes upon it it's no longer a lecture note are you seeing now so when i'm speaking to you ordinarily you would not have believed what i'm saying but there is an anointing upon it that compels you not only to believe but receive the grace and you will stand up and receive and reproduce the result listen let me tell you brothers and sisters hear me the ministry of transformation is a system you must understand if you are in this place and you are called into ministry, whether you have started or not, pay attention. Get ready for empty pews if you don't understand the technology that transforms men. People will hype you and you will be excited for a few months waiting for the next person who will open church near you and they will all move there and leave you because they are tired of your stillness. There's got to be something that brings freshness to people. Are we together now? When a businessman comes to Koinonia, he must find a dimension of the kingdom that can minister to him. When a student comes, he must find a dimension of the kingdom that can minister. So, when our little children, our little ones, as small as they are, they must be able to find a dimension of the kingdom that can minister to them. Failure to do that, we are not in ministry. We are just acting on stage. Hallelujah. And this comes with a price. Prayer is only one of the price. It comes with diligence. That's why I challenge a lot of people, especially those who want to go into ministry. You know, most people think ministry is a lazy man's work. When you don't get a job, you know, they didn't give you employment all around, you just quietly go and start ministry. No, ministry is not for lazy people. Ministry is for diligent people. The, the hours it takes to prepare just a simple message that you deliver in, 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 in one hour or so. And now we, we live in a, a technology-driven society. You mention one Greek word, you are lying about it, someone is checking right away and telling his name. He said, no, no, no. It was 1997, this word. It was a mistake. He will even say the article where you got it wrong. It takes intelligence, not just spirituality. You should not just say something. You must have something to say. Everybody is saying something. People don't listen to talkatives again. 
So on one side, you are contending for the power, the grace, and the anointing. But on the other side, you must give people information that is worth their time. Nobody has time to waste listening to junks and nonsense. You can impress yourself as a man of God and flatter yourself together with your workers. And then people just watch you and pity you for a few months and finally reveal to you how much you are not blessing them by their absence in your meeting. You should miss koinonia and feel it. That's a sign that you are receiving something. That if for any reason, because of your busy schedule or travel or trip or whatever, you miss koinonia. There are thousands of people, close to 100,000 people, connecting from different parts of the world, online right now, listening to me as I'm speaking. Why? Some of them are unable to make it. That's a blessing. The moment our teaching is uploaded, online in 24 hours there's 1 million downloads in 24 hours transformation somebody somewhere is depending on that truth are we together now I'd like you to pray just one prayer before I continue and say Lord make my life valuable let me be a blessing open your mouth and pray please You brought me to the earth for a reason. Lord, I don't want to live a mediocre life. The dimension of diligence it will take. The dimension of consistency it will take. To emerge triumphant. Grant me the grace. Go ahead and pray. Challenge laziness. Challenge unseriousness. Challenge mediocrity challenge playing around and wasting your time the labor dimension of a successful life the labor dimension of an impactful life you must cry for it from heaven I live to praise your name I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. I live, I live to praise your name. And I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. I live, I live, I live, I live to praise your name. I have no fear. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is ministering one more prayer point for me that we will pray. I'd like you to pray for the next one minute with all your heart and say, Lord, there is a faulty understanding in my life that is keeping me down, that is limiting the ministry of the Holy Spirit in my life. It may have come through culture. It may have come through my pain. I cry to the heavens. Give me a visitation. I declare my disloyalty to any mindset. I declare my disloyalty to any ideology, any thinking that is not consistent with the word of God any thinking that is not consistent with the ways of the kingdom any thought pattern that is not grounded and rooted upon the working knowledge of the word no matter how long I have sustained that knowledge lift your voice and pray from the depth of your heart I may be Igbo I may be Yoruba I may be Hausa I may be whatever nation whatever locality around the world I insist in the name of Jesus that my mind conforms to the patterns of the kingdom there's so much the holy spirit wants to do in and through my life something about my life is the reason why i am poor something about my my life my mindset is the reason why the anointing cannot flow freely there's a reason why my church is not growing there's a reason why my life is grounded i take responsibility i take responsibility i take responsibility no blaming parents, no blaming government, no blaming neighbors, no blaming anyone. I take full responsibility over my destiny and I declare my willingness to change. That as the word of God comes, I receive it 
I don't argue with what works. Hallelujah. Please sit down. The Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. I say it all the time. This thing we are trying to get to has been, is a destination that someone is currently there. Your future is someone's present already. The dimension you seek to enter in the anointing, there is a living person on earth walking in it. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. I like this part of this song. That's the only part I'm interested in. We may be few who are serious about this. But the Bible says, I mean, Don Muen, really, not the Bible. It says we are surrounded. No, no. In fact, the Bible even says it. It says we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Witnesses. Men who have done it before. They grew up from poor families. And they caused them that you will not make it. But they accessed a mystery. And they rose beyond that dimension. They went to school with no one to pay their school fees. Only a box. But a dimension of God bailed them out. Time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. He said men who through faith subdued kingdoms. Wrought righteousness. It's not new. You are not the first to do it. Women who were barren declared that they did not have womb. But they access a mystery in the kingdom that gave them hope. And they gave birth to twins and triplets. You are not the first. Don't mourn as if there is no hope. There is hope. But the hope is in a dimension of the word of God you catch. Not every part of the word of God is responsible for your answer. Your answer is somewhere. Your assignment is to search it out or listen to those who have searched it out. You don't argue when you don't yet have results. It's pride. Archbishop Benson Idahosa said, you only criticize a man who you have done twice what he has not done once. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Lord, I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. For my life and destiny, our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh, no matter what I'm going through today, Lord, I look to Yahweh. Yahweh, my hope is Yahweh. Yahweh, sing it with faith in your heart. I look to Yahweh. Forever Yahweh. Yahweh. He said, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Jeremiah 29 11. It says, They are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. Surely, he said, There is an end and an expectation. Someone needs to prophesy this there is an end. This hunger will not be forever. I, I, no, no, I may not have an anointing now, but there is an end. There is a day I will access a deep fountain of grace that the nations will see the hand of God upon my life. My child may not be making it now, but I tell you, brothers and sisters, there is an end. Prophesy it in one minute. I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Pray, my hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. Lord, I look to Yahweh. My eyes are upon you, Jesus. They may criticize you, but fix your eyes on Jesus. They may not understand why you are this passionate. Fix your eyes, not on the mockers. Fix your eyes, not on the problem. Fix your eyes. Not on the limitation. It says looking up to Jesus. The author and the finisher. Come on sing. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is 
Yahweh, Yahweh, I look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Please sit down. This is already a word for someone tonight, even before we start. Though weeping endures for a night, my Bible, your Bible says joy comes. Don't allow little hindrances on your part of greatness. Make it look as if God lied. You have been tithing, you've not seen anything. You've been praying, there's no grace that is at work. I tell you, something is happening in the realm of the spirit. He said, ye who have continued with me, one day it will be like a dream. You will come out of your house in the morning and step into a dimension that you will never, never, never recover from. Listen, sit down. Let me tell you a little story. Years ago, I used to go in the night. I tell you, I feel such a strong anointing. Strong anointing of the Holy Ghost. That's what happens when we begin to teach truth. He's called the spirit of truth. So he comes to pack the truth that you are receiving. Every time the truth comes, it comes like an arrow. It comes upon your spirit man. And then you receive it. Capacity is given to you to rise in the spirit. Listen, listen. Years ago, every night, I would just go and pray. Pray in the spirit for hours and study and return back. No anointing no nothing then there was no access to the privileges that people had are we together now that time if someone fell under the anointing you would take him to the hospital very few people understood the move of the spirit i would go and pray in tongues and sometimes two three hours prayer will turn into a vigil and i'll finish and carry my bible broke but in the spirit never understood the things of god but in the spirit controversial and mysterious but in the spirit and I continued there and God told me he said son one day men will look at you and think you are a God I remember God told me that thing just continue sometimes with no food I had not eaten anything don't think I was born inside an aircraft no sir he said, for we do not. Let me tell you one of the symbols of the apostolic ministry. God will pass you through almost every problem you are anointed to solve. That is the only way the anointing comes. An apostle is not an evangelist. No. That furnace of affliction, you must pass through it. Is, is what creates the scar. He said, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the mark of Christ. Let no man trouble me. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. My hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. For time. Lord, we look to Yahweh. For the last time now. Hallelujah sit down if you can pick something to write let's just discuss a few things so that we can pray when God is done with you brothers and sisters except you choose see listen look at me let me teach you something when you are being mentored and trained don't change the equation you are giving you will not be successful that way are you hearing what I'm saying don't tamper with the equation you are giving. Be foolish enough to walk with it and watch the wonder it will make out of your life. Jesus said the kingdom is for children because if you tell a child, jump. If a Jimmy tells his daughter, get up and fly down, she would do it without thinking. Sometimes this our, this claim that we have grown is the reason why we never walk with God. 
the simplicity of spiritual things. There are so many people who want the anointing but will never sit down to learn how it comes. You tell them this is how it comes, they will change the equation somewhere and never get it. And stay forever not getting it. Lord Jesus, let this place remain a place of transformation. We will be wicked people if we gather your people here and waste their time and not bless them. Coming here alone is a sacrifice. You don't want to know how many spirits try to stop you to come for every meeting. That you can leave your house and come here is a sign that victory started, not that victory is starting. Sir, please stand up. I want to talk to you. Yes, sir. Yes. The Lord is healing you. You are sick. What's wrong with you? I'm seeing your legs. You stand a little and the legs, there's pain. Come. That devil will leave you now. Hallelujah. 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 I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a man that the devil wants to inflict with paralysis, like complete stroke. Sir? It was on 1st January 9th. Hold on, please. Saturday, very early, I had to rush from the village back to where I'm staying. Started. Okay. Started. When was that? First January. That is Sunday. First morning. January. Yes. That's when this happened. Yes. My and God. I rushed from the village to, to Abuja. That's no. I'm seeing you go for a meeting in a village or something. And while you were on your way, I'm seeing something leaving you from there. This is where this came. It is, uh, we are going to look for a land. Somebody is taking the land. That's what I'm saying. saying. In a village. Yes. From there you went to Abuja. That's where the problem came from. Sir, this is not leg problem. This is witchcraft. You understand? No matter what kind of drug you take, you'll find out that it will not relieve you. I hope you're not embarrassed, sir. Well, I'm tired of the drugs. That's why I left Abuja yesterday for the here. Yeah. You came from Abuja? Yes. Do you think you will go back the same? Do you think it's fair if you go back the same? No. Do you think I will be a good man of God if you go back the same? Well, you are a man of God, sir. Now, think about this. This man left Abuja and came. Now, we have, we have, we have made all kinds of noise. We are men of God. You see the danger of not preparing? You come and stand and brag around and tell people you are hearing the voice of God and here is someone left Abuja and came. Why should he not go to a herbalist if he cannot be healed? No, 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 no. I said it, if I were not a preacher, I would not go to a herbalist in the secret. I would go in the open and carry the charm and come for fellowship and sit down in front let a man of God look at me if you criticize me I say I agree I'm guilty but he, I hand over the charm to you hold it and heal me if you cannot shut your mouth you see that's why you need an encounter you don't talk like this without an encounter you will make a fool of yourself no, sir sir Jesus will heal you. This is called koinonia. Hold my hand, sir. <sighs> my God. Jesus, I cause this now. Right now. Out! Just guide him. Out! I command in the name of Jesus may the hand of the Lord touch you right now sir look at me lift one leg go ahead lift it 
Just look at me. Forget about the leg. Lift your leg. Are you feeling any pain there now? Huh? You're seeing improvement? Yes. Right there. Look at this. Give Jesus praise. Come up. Walk. Come. Lift it. Do what you couldn't do. Can you jump? Try. Look at this. In the name of Jesus, that anointing is upon you. Never be the same. Not only this, but the Lord is restoring your finances. The Lord is saying, I should tell you. Are you together with that woman? I'm seeing life leaving you. That's your wife. Wife, come. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. I'm looking at this woman in the spirit and I'm seeing a woman crying and saying, Lord, when will you visit us? Madam, please don't cry. Jesus is in this place. What is this? Children. Who is a reverend? You lost your child. Who is a reverend? My God. It's all right. The Lord is restoring this family. Believe me when I say this. Mama, don't cry. Jesus is Lord. Daddy, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, there is a grace and anointing in this place to wipe tears. It says to comfort they that mourn in Zion. There are people who are mourning, although they are in Zion. Comfort those that mourn in Zion. Is that not what the Bible says we should do? We declare comfort to you right now. Stretch your hands towards this dear family and pray in one minute. Koinonia, pray. We bring your challenge face to face with the anointing. In the name of Jesus, we bring it face to face with the anointing. The same God that has touched you now. The same God touching mommy. Touching all the children. Hallelujah. Sir, I prophesy to you that after today's meeting, from as early as tomorrow, write it down, you will begin to hear dramatic testimonies in your life. Listen, you see, listen, I don't have a prophetic office. My prophetic dimension is creative. I will not just reveal. It makes it happen. You see that? There is, there is, the revelatory dimension of the prophetic where you access what will happen and inform them so that you give them hope but the creative dimension of God is your word is what makes it happen so in the name of Jesus whether or not that possibility was in your future I put it there in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ God bless you sir God bless you man thank you Stephen, Stephen, who is Stephen? My God, this is what happens now. Stephen, I'm hearing a name, Stephen. Stephen, if that is your name, if you're inside or outside, Stephen, I just want to speak to that person, Stephen. Stephen, my dad. My brother, look at me. God is taking the load on your head right now. I saw you coming in. I'm seeing load that is bigger than you. What? Why carry all this kind of load? Huh? Your life needs a real miracle. Almost everything about your life needs a miracle. And I'm going to pray for you. Look at me, um, gentleman. I have to pray for you because I'm seeing the devil wants to put sickness in your body. And I have to pray for you. The devil wants to put sickness in your body and I'll pray for you. We'll hurry up. Sorry. I hope I'm not wasting your time. Praise the Lord.
I'm seeing two ladies. The anointing of the Spirit will come on them and 19 days at a stretch, the families will have breakthroughs. 19 days at a stretch. That's what the Lord is revealing to me. 19 days. 19 days. 19 days at a stretch by the Spirit. Let it be according to the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus. My brother, I want to pray for you. The Lord wants to take this load away from your life. You believe that? Hold my hands. Jesus, please let your grace walk upon his life. I set you free right now in the name of Jesus. Sickness leaves your body. You have no business with infirmity. I curse it in your life in the name of Jesus. My brother, God wants to help you, but there is a lot of disorganization in your life. You need a lot of order. Huh? You need a lot of order in your life. God is helping you in the name of Jesus. I'm hearing the prayer of someone's mother in my ears. And that prayer will be answered now with the anointing touching that person. Right as I'm speaking now, the mother of that person is praying. families free. Bless them by your spirit. Bless them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come promise. God is giving you wisdom. A new dimension of wisdom. That's what God is giving you. Fresh wisdom. You need it for this season. The Lord is giving you wisdom. Great wisdom. Great wisdom. Great wisdom. Can you just allow me flow as the Holy Spirit is flowing? Is that alright? Is that alright? So that you don't feel sometimes God somebody at the back, the ushering stand the power of God is touching that person right now someone right at the back the ushering stand and the Lord is saying it is over this is the prophetic word it is over it is over it is over I'm prophesying to 11 people the mountain that stands before you the mountain that stands, 11 people, 11 people. No, no, as I speak, the power of God will confirm it. The mountain that stands before you, my God says I should tell you to be swallowed up, swallowed up, swallowed up, swallowed up. Kaparatokata. I place the word of God upon this. The mountain that stands before you is swallowed up in the name of Jesus. The mountain that stands before you is swallowed up by the anointing of the Spirit. Pay attention when you receive from God and expect to testify. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is visiting someone in the worship team. I hear laughter, laughter, laughter. That's what I hear in my spirit, laughter. I place the word of God upon this, laughter. That's what I'm hearing in the spirit. The Lord is ministering to me. Someone, radical breakthrough and transformation is coming upon someone in the worship team. Laughter. That's what the spirit of God is ministering to me. Ministering to me. Ministering to me. The lady standing near you, the anointing of the spirit is upon her. It's a new chapter in your life. That's what the spirit of God says. A new chapter in your life. New chapter in your life. The old is gone. The old is gone. The old is gone. The old is gone. Behold, I make all things new. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 I'm seeing one of the usher ladies climbing a ladder in the spirit. I don't know who, but I'm seeing one of the ladies, you are an usher, climbing a ladder in the spirit. And the Lord says, I should prophesy it. You are an usher, I know you are walking. 
but this miracle is for you climbing a ladder in the realm of the spirit a course marriage course is being broken in two families two families specifically now is a course is a course is a course shabata lakata Brata sebe teke nekataya. Break that curse. Break that curse. There are two ladies here. One is outside. You've been having irregular menstruation. This is, this is a very dangerous situation. And the Lord is touching that person. One is outside. And the Lord is setting that person free now. Now from that devilish thing. It must go now. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. Paul said and when I came to you. I did not come with the excellency of speech. People are tired of all these things. People need real breakthroughs in their lives. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain. Just speak to one more family and then we'll sit down. There is an Igbo lady or an Igbo family from Abia State. God is setting them free right now. I'm seeing it in the realm of the spirit. Abia State. And the Lord is saying it's time for the captivity of that family to be rolled away. It's time for the captivity of that person. Lord, I don't know who that person is, but I stretch my hands right now. And I decree and declare in the name of Jesus from Abia. That's what the Spirit of God is ministering to me. Lord, whether online, whether here, wherever it is, I pray that your power will break that family free from the shackles of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's someone following online from Joss. From Joss. You have an ear problem. And the Lord is setting you free right now. From Joss, you have an ear problem. In the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus please sit down sit down God bless you a few minutes let's just touch on something tonight Jesus please take something to write and um, let me just teach briefly our time is gone I love it when the Holy Spirit steps in to do these things. Look at me. Do you know why many of us may never walk in these dimensions? The motif of our heart is to create an impression where people think this is an anointed man. If that is your motif, God will never trust you with this kind of power. You will destroy people with it. Are we together? Most people don't know that the anointing of the Spirit can kill the vessel carrying it. The anointing is like electricity. The same electricity that gives light can shock someone to death. Are we together now? When God anoints you, the standards become higher of his dealings with you. Someone can do something else and go scot free. But for you, just because Moses was angry, God said you are not entering the promised land. Yet the people who grumbled entered. So, be careful when you just say give me an anointing there, there are rules there is there is a system with which you work with this thing pride a lot of us here if God should trust us with this kind of grace people are in trouble especially when you enter a meeting where someone has doubted you for a long time you say let me let, he's, he's the one first let me release that anointing on the doubter and, and rubbish him then he will use that as a lesson 
and know that I am Apostle Joshua Selman and God says no way my, the death of my son is too expensive for that nonsense I hear the chains falling. No, I'm not singing. I'm prophesying. That's what I'm hearing. You will see it happen now. His word will never go for it. Don't mind me. Just allow me to do my madness. I hear the chains falling. Literally, I'm hearing physical chains. I hear the chains. I hear the chains. Lord, let them fall from the life of me. That's what the anointing was designed to do. Hallelujah. Let's sit down. I want to teach you a very big secret tonight. Philippians chapter 2. The Lordship of Christ. Philippians chapter 2. The Lordship of Christ. Esther Yahi. The Lord is saying I am helping you. I am bringing you help. I'm bringing you help. Where your strength has failed, I am helping you. That's what the Lord is saying. What your parents could not do, I am helping you. I am helping you. Philippians chapter 2. The Lordship of Christ. What I want to teach you tonight is a very powerful secret. It's one of the mysteries that control walking in spiritual power. So I want you to pay attention to it. Hallelujah. Now, there are, there are different dimensions of God as revealed in Scripture. Please follow me. Different dimensions of God as revealed in Scripture. And when a believer comes to Jesus Christ, when you come to what we call surrender your heart to him, it is important for us to understand what dimension of God is revealed. Are we together now? Every dimension of Jesus in the Bible is responsible for certain outcomes of a believer's life. The names of God all through the Bible represent different dimensions of him that were encountered by different people. So when they met the God that provides, they called him Jairam. Are we together? When they met a God who could override people's wrongs, was merciful and compassionate, they called him Rapha or Rapheka. Are we together now? So the names of God defined the dimensions of his dealings and his operation with people. Now, when you come to Jesus, listen carefully. When you come to Jesus as a sinner, you hear an altar call or the spirit of God convicts you right the bible says he will convict the, the world of three things of sin of righteousness and of judgment that's the ministry of the holy spirit to the unbeliever the ministry of conviction bringing him to a point where he will see his need the dimension of god that is revealed at salvation is jesus our savior it is important you understand that the saving dimension of Jesus when you when you preach Jesus as savior you reveal the love of God expressed to man through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus listen listen herein is the grace of God revealed the bible says that we are saved by that grace are we together now so when you reveal Jesus as savior is the dimension of God revealed as father desiring to bring alienated sons and daughters who have been alienated, the Bible says, from the commonwealth of Israel. And he brings that through the substitutionary sacrifice, the atoning sacrifice of Jesus. Jesus, our Savior, dying on the cross for your sin and my sin to fulfill the law that says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Are we together now? So, when you receive Jesus as Savior, and it's important, you know, many believers doubt their salvation. And the reason why they doubt their salvation is they do not know what the condition for a believer to be saved is. There's something they used to teach us called assurance of salvation. Assurance of salvation is not the same thing as salvation. Assurance of salvation is the basis.
basis upon which your salvation lies. So you know it and then you can know whether or not you are saved and in Christ. The Bible gives us very clear parameters to know that a person is saved. Are we together now? The Bible says, for instance, in Romans chapter 10, when you read from verse 8 to 10, the Bible says, who shall ascend to the heavens and so on and so forth. He said, but the word is nigh thee in thy mouth and in thy heart. Even the word of faith that we preach. That if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him. So there are several things that must be believed by the believer. Those of us who are of the Anglican background, there's something that they call Anglican and I think parts of Catholic the apostles creed the apostles creed is a compendium of the revelation of jesus as savior chanted in a poem right so you say the things you believe that makes you a christian right so you start i believe in god the father and jesus his holy son so on and so forth you know born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was dead and crucified buried he rose again on the third day not the fourth day it's important to believe exactly what the bible says there are people who believe jesus rose up on the seventh day you are wrong you are still not saved jesus did not because he the spirit of truth cannot be administered with a lie it has to be true are you getting what i'm saying now very important there are many things about the christian faith that becomes a foundation if you do not believe in the virgin birth, you are not a Christian. I look forward to times when I begin to write books. There are many truths that must be taught the body of Christ. The virgin birth of Jesus is important. The virgin birth of Jesus is the only basis that authenticates his divinity. That means that Mary had Jesus without the assistance of a man. Otherwise, he could not have been divine. So the virgin birth is not just proving that the lady who carried Jesus kept herself until Jesus came. It's more than that. It's more than that. You must believe that Jesus became a man and walked on the earth. The earthly ministry of Jesus is part of the basis. Because the Bible tells us he became a man. That is the only reason why you should believe that he's a high priest who has been touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Are we together now? Yeah. You must believe in the fact that he was sinless. Now, this is the part people don't believe. If you don't believe that Jesus was sinless while he walked upon the earth, it's a terrible thing. There are all kinds of theologies going around saying, no, no look, um, he, it's impossible. He was a man with flesh and blood. 100% man. It's important for us to, no, 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 the Bible tells us and we trust the word of God. We were not there, but we believe in the integrity of the word because the Bible says holy men wrote as they were moved of the spirit and the spirit of God is the spirit of truth, meaning he cannot lie. It's not that he does not lie, he cannot lie. Are we together? This is the confidence upon which our faith is grounded on. And you must believe he did not die on the road. Jesus did not die by car accident. How he died matters to your salvation. Right? The Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. How did that happen? For it is written, according to the Mosaic law, cursed is every man that hangs on the tree. The man who dies from starvation is not cursed. He just died. So if Jesus died without dying on the tree, he could not be a curse for man. Cost is he that hanged on the tree, right? That the blessings of Abraham, what is the blessings of Abraham? Not car, not money, justification by faith. That's what the Bible calls the blessings of Abraham. The blessings of Abraham is different from the blessing. There are two different things. The blessing of Abraham is justification by faith. God preached the gospel to Abraham, right? That's what Apostle Peter taught us. And Abraham believed God and it was credited unto him for righteousness. So we like faithful Abraham partake of that blessing by giving an opportunity to believe God and receive that credit of righteousness. That's the blessing of Abraham. So that we are justified by faith and then it gives us access to receive the promise of the spirit through faith. Galatians chapter 3 is what teaches us that. So it is important that we understand that Jesus as Savior talks about the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. 
Now listen please. There is nothing that any man can do to be saved. No, 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 no. By, by that I mean there, there is no contribution. There is a participation, but there is no contribution. Your participation is to receive by faith. That's the only thing. But you do not have a contribution when Jesus is revealed as Savior. The moment Jesus is revealed as Savior, he, the love of God is revealed unassisted. Unassisted. The substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. That's the apex of the demonstration of the love and the grace of God. Behold what manner of love the Bible says the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called. That's the process. Are we together? Are you following me now? I'm taking our time to give us this basis so that it will strengthen our understanding. There is no man, there is no good works of any man that can be the basis upon which your salvation, no, 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 it's, it's impossible. I cannot be saved on the grounds of my works. I cannot be saved on grounds of things that I have done. No. Every time you look up to what you have done to be saved, you are out of the grace of God. But the moment you are saved, not walking the works of kingdom is the abuse of that grace. You see it now. Before you are saved, you only receive. After you are saved, you are empowered. The dimension of grace upon you no longer just becomes receiving. It becomes an empowerment to do. I must walk the works of him that sent me. Now, this is the balance we must bring over the grace message. There are two dimensions. There is the grace that appears as God's mercy given to man simply because of our helplessness to be able to attain that position of righteousness. The very nature of God. But now, having obtained that righteousness, we are further empowered by the ministry of the Spirit to begin to produce what the Bible calls the fruits of righteousness. Are we together? But that's not where I'm going tonight. There is a dimension of Jesus Christ that many people have not come into terms with. It has not been a revelation to them. And that's why they don't walk in power. That's why they cannot walk in certain dimensions. It's called the Lordship of Christ. It's one of the, it's one of the, the pillars of the Christian faith. You cannot claim you are a Christian and not acknowledge the Lordship of Christ. Philippians chapter 2, please, from verse 5. Let this mind, he says, be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So the word mind there means an understanding. There is an understanding that must be in you. Next verse says, though, who, although, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. 7 says, but he made himself of no reputation, and he took upon himself the form of a servant and was in the likeness of men. Eight, and being found in the fashion of man he humbled himself you see that follow the progression and was obedient unto death mark that obedient unto death obedient even to the point of death obedient with no resistance we are studying the servanthood of jesus now the hallmark of his servanthood was what obedience that costed him his life right then he says even death on the cross verse 9 wherefore on the strength of his obedience unto death although being God God had so highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every other name next verse it says that at the name of Jesus not necessarily the mention of it it's not the mention of it that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and of things in the earth and of things under the earth verse 11 and every tongue should confess that jesus christ is what the name that was given to him we have discussed this in koinonia the name is not jesus i hope you know this the name that was given to him is not jesus jesus was the name his mother gave him when they gave birth to him correct christ was the name he assumed when he became full of the spirit but lord was conferred upon him that's the name the name is not jesus the name is lord that confessed that jesus who became the christ in his earthly walk is now lord 
Are you seeing that now? To the glory of God the Father. So the Lordship of Christ is very important. Write this down please. There are a number of Hebrew words that are translated Lord. I'm, I'm not, I don't want to play around with Hebrew and Greek words, but just a few of them. There is Jehovah, right? Jehovah is translated Lord in capital letter. It was his name revealed to, to the Jews as the God of the Hebrews. But there is Adon, from where we get the word Adonai, right? Is translated Lord. Lord. The Greek word is curious. Don't, don't, don't worry. I'm just giving you a theological background of the word Lord. And what that means is sovereign controller. Listen, please. It means master. It means owner. But it also means sovereign controller. It gives you a picture of one who either by his own strength or by your permission has unrestrained access to everything about your life. Are you getting the idea now? Either by his own strength, so I can come into someone's house and push the door by my strength. With respect to that combat, I am Lord because I push the door. Are we together? Or the person can open the door and welcome me. I am still Lord. So when the Bible gives the idea of Lordship, it talks of ownership, it talks of sovereign power, it talks of dominion, but it also talks of unrestrained access. Are we together? So Jesus being Lord is a revelation of one who has absolute control. This dimension of the Lordship of Jesus has not been experienced in many believers. Listen. Did you know that you can have a revelation of Jesus as Savior and yet not have a revelation of Him as Lord? When you have a revelation of Jesus as Lord, it will change everything in your life as we are going to see shortly. The Lordship of Jesus is the dominion of His person over every aspect of your life. And there is a law in the realm of the Spirit. Your degree of submission to authority is your degree of dominion. Listen, listen. The centurion came to Jesus and he said, you know, this and that, my son is ill and please, I want, you know, Jesus said, okay, you are a captain in the army. Let me respect you and come to your house. And he shocked Jesus with a revelation. He said, no, 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 no. You don't need to come to my house. Speak the word only. For I am a man under authority, the authority of the Roman government. So my strength comes with my submission to that authority. And because I am under authority, I tell one, go and he must go. Come and he must come. So he said, Jesus, I know that you are not here by yourself. You too, you are under an authority. And Jesus said, I have not found such faith, such understanding, that a man knows the relationship between submission and power. In fact, here's how Apostle James puts it. He says, submit yourself to the mighty hand of God. Then, he says, resist the devil and he will he will not flee because of your ability to resist him. He will flee because of the authority that backs you while you are resisting. So your own power is derived from your authority. Is the Greek word exousia. The capacity to legislate on behalf of one on the strength of your, co your connection. Are we together now? The best description of that ability is marriage. So if a man is married with his wife, if the man is not around, the wife can safely, if he's a responsible man, the wife can safely act in the stead of the man. Is that true? Yeah. So Jesus gives his bride, the church, the unrestrained ability to demonstrate the reality of his person on earth. But there is a condition. The condition is that like a faithful woman, only becomes a faithful woman on the strength of her submission to her husband. Is that not true? The Bible says, wives, do what? Submit yourselves. So the church that is now the wife of the Lord Jesus, the bride of Christ, derives her power by submitting. The revelation of the Lordship of Jesus is why demons eat up people cheaply. Why principalities and powers destroy people? 
because when they come they see that you have believed in the substitutionary power of Jesus but you have not believed in his life gaining dominance over you write this down the dominion of the word in us is the clearest measure of the lordship of Christ in you the dominion of the word of God Dominion means the degree to which your life is a reflection of obedience to the word. The dominion of the word in us is the clearest measure of the lordship of Christ. So if you say Jesus is lord of my life, all I need to do is to see to what degree your life confirms to the word. And then I know whether or not he is lord over your life. Because that Jesus we speak about is the living logos. John 1 verse 1. The word of God. Jesus gave us a mysterious statement. Say, how can you believe God whom you have not seen when you cannot believe your brother? So if you cannot believe the word of God written, you'll be a liar to claim you believe God. The Bible already said that God you believe inspired men to write this. If you do not believe scripture, then it means you are not a believer. Listen, the dominion by dominion the unrestrained access that you have given the word of God to find expression in your life is the clearest measure. Look at me. Jesus being Lord in our lives is not something that is just, it's not a lip service. Your life must demonstrate that death. Your life must demonstrate it. There are two standards that demonstrate that Jesus is Lord over our lives. Write it down quickly. Number one is surrender. Your degree of surrender. If Jesus is Lord of your life, let me see it. By how much of surrender. How much you are willing to decrease that he will increase. Not how much you are willing to pray in tongues. Not how much you are willing to preach. No. Not how much you are willing to climb scriptures surrender this is where many believers in the church are shortchanged and greatly cheated the difficulty to surrender everything king of my life you are my all and i live for you alone you're the king of my life you have my all and I lay my life. Greater love had no man than this, than a man laid down. The degree to which you have surrendered your finances, the degree to which you have surrendered your emotions. Look up, please. You can be born again. You have given God your heart, but you have not given God your money. He's not Lord of your life. You have given God your, your heart, but you have not given God your intellect. You see, the area Satan attacks in your life is the area that the Lordship of Jesus has not yet covered. That becomes his place, his point of attack in a man's life. When Satan comes into your life, he can't just attack you anyhow. He keeps searching. He does it by trial and error. So he looks at your giving life. He looks at your obedience and he knows that Jesus is not yet Lord here. He looks at your ego and he knows that you can give every other thing but your reputation. And then his attack comes from the dimension of your reputation. Jesus is truly Lord in your life when you are completely surrendered. Everything. It, it is a theme in this ministry. How that you must surrender everything to God. It's called death. Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ, the Bible says. Nevertheless, I live. He said, yet not I, but the life that I now live in the flesh, that is the body. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Right? Who loved me and gave himself for me. It's a realm called Galatians 2.20. Brothers and sisters, please look at me. Whatever, hold on, let me press a point. Whatever in your life you cannot give God, is the idol in your life and that's what satan will use to kill you there are many people is relationships and association you can give god everything but friends are we together yeah 
Everything but friends. Everything but your education. Oh, I'm brilliant, you know. I have a master's in this. I have a PhD in this and that and that. I'm an intellectual. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm this and that and that. I, I have 12 masters. And I mean, you have to respect that. And the devil says, that's right. He will use it and destroy your life. Everything you don't hand over to God cannot be trusted to bless you. Whatever it is. In the kingdom, things only bless us to the degree we've handed them over to God. So the test of lordship was best demonstrated in the life of the patriarch Abraham. Genesis chapter 22 verse 1. The Bible says how that God tested Abraham. And he says, Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest. Right? And he says, and it came to pass after these things that God did test or tempt Abraham. He, God was trying to get to bless Abraham. But he knew that Abraham must be tested. That lordship test. Take thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee to the land of Moriah, and offer him for a bond offering. Abraham, come promise. Abraham wakes up in the morning to a prophetic instruction. After waiting for over 25 years to have a child. Please pay attention. And then the Lord tells him, carry this child. Don't discuss with your wife. Go and kill him. And then the Bible says, Abraham arose early. Everybody say obedience. Unto death. Say it, obedience. Unto death. And he held his son. Do you know what that means? Gathered the servants and said, look, we have to go and offer sacrifices unto God. And Abraham was thinking in his heart, my future. The son of every man represents his future. The one who continues the name. And he says, Abraham, destroy your future. Can you give up your future to prove that you love me? Ah. Abraham said, this is hard, but I will do it. You see, every time I teach about surrender, it does me something. Because it's something that has happened in my own life. It's a circumcision that only when you have given up everything. Master, we have left all to follow you. Left all to follow you. And he took Abraham. He took Isaac. When he got to the base of the mountain, he knew that the servants would think he has run mad and would stop him. And he said, you people should wait. He started climbing the mountain with his own son. Only son. His future. The son of promise. Waited more than 25 years. And the son Isaac started getting concerned. And he said, Father, I see the wood. I see the fire. Of course, he saw the knife too. Where is the sacrifice? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. In his heart, he was saying, son, before your arrival, there was one whom I loved and not even my love for you can compete. My God. That is the realm of men and women who will walk in power. Who can give God anything, including their lives. He tied Isaac. You can imagine Isaac begging his father and saying, Father, please, if I offended you, forgive me. He said, no, no, it's not about offense. It's about the Lordship. And God was seeing a foreshadow of what only him could do. Do you know people could not give their children easily like that? God was about to give his only son. And here he was seeing a mortal man. And Abraham carried Isaac and dropped Isaac. The angels were wondering, asking questions. And said, I hope this guy is correct. His future is about to be jeopardized. He lifted the knife. Romans chapter 4. The Bible says that Abraham already planned, paraphrasing, that when he killed Isaac, he would beg God to bring Isaac back to life. In other words, God, I've obeyed you. Now my son is dead. Please bring him back to life. And when he lifted up the knife, God said, stop, Abraham, for now, I know. Not when you left your house. Now, now, I know that thou fearest me, seeing that you did not withhold your son from me. Here comes a blessing. Now, I swear by my name, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, listen, 
many people claim the blessings of Abraham. The Jews wanted to do that. And they said, we are the sons of Abraham. And he said, if you are the sons of Abraham, you will do the works of Abraham. The works of, of Abraham is loyalty and obedience unto death. That's how you get the blessings of Abraham. It's not by chanting and quoting. Uh -uh. You are not qualified when you cannot submit and surrender everything. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, if it is God you are working with, he will demand everything from you. Everything. Just listen to what I'm telling you. He will demand everything everything means he must probe it until it comes under his lordship just when you love this brother you cannot sleep because of him then God comes to you in the night and says my daughter you have been saying you love me so much but I'm asking you a question can you leave this guy he didn't say leave him it's just a question and he said no this has to be a demon I'm 32 I need to marry by March what kind of lack of breakthrough is this apostle prophesied miracle service that I must marry and now one spirit and you reject and cast when you finish God says are you done answer my question the still small voice can you leave the brother and just when you are about to think his call comes and he sends a text thank God for the gift of him in my life I say God I reject this I, I reject this don't play with my heart and God says, that's the idol in your heart. If you cannot lay him aside, you finish with your salary and you are happy. You want to go and buy trousers and shirt. And God says, carry all that money. Join it to whatever else you have in your account. And just when they send you money from abroad and says, carry it and go and say, so God, Abba, you are joking. Even you, you know I won't do it. There's no point asking me. You already know I would not obey you. Because it can't be you. You are a good God. You don't punish people like that. You see how we use scriptures? And then God looks at you. Whereas his plan was that by that act of obedience, he will bless you. Do you know there are times God has told me, please I'm not saying you should bring money to me after the service. That's not what I'm saying. Get me correct so you don't think I'm using someone to manipulate you. You know I'm blessed. Listen. Do you know that there are times God has spoken to me that he was going to test certain people and he would give them instructions to empty their accounts for instance and carry the money and come and give me now God did not tell me their faces but God told me that when they come I should not collect it I should only bless it and give them back and you see the people dragging themselves they stand like prisoners who just came out I mean they, they can't believe it they are surprised that they are obeying because they are not supposed to obey that kind of instruction. Obedience unto death. While you are laughing, I hope you get what I'm saying. The implications of the Lordship of Christ. And then they come and stand. And sometimes it's not like I pray on the morning and give them immediately. I just bless it and I said, alright, um, the Lord will honor you. And they live sad. You know something, you know that something died. God, is this you? I did this. Did they charm me? And after three days, I called them and I said, this is what the Lord has said. I should bless you. No, 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 apostle. And I said, no. And within one week, their lives changed to another dimension. When you pass the Lordship test, no charm, believe me, no principality, no enchantment will survive you because you are under an authority that is committed to defending you. Hallelujah. One time, I heard, I think one of our people here was stranded somewhere. And the person called me. He was a worker. And he called me. And he said, I'm a worker in Koinonia. I'm stranded here and there and there. And when I verified that the story was true, I said immediately, we'll try to get resources to you immediately. Why? Because the fact that that person identified as a worker, and we know that the person is a faithful worker, puts pressure on my integrity to defend the person. Are we together now? Yeah. That's why God does not show up and defend many of us. Some of you will go for a meeting now and say there is a lady wearing yellow. Whether you see her or not, the power of God will touch you and everybody is watching you. I say, ah! Apostle must be carrying a charm. It's not that easy. It's lordship. 
the key is lordship that i may decrease so that he christ will increase have you laid down your isaac everybody please look at me carefully don't say yes laying down your isaac is do you know there are certain isaacs you cannot lay down you can only give god permission to carry them you don't have the strength to lay it down Koinonia is quiet tonight because you suspect God will do something about this message. I assure you he will. Don't, don't even try to. He will right away. The God I serve. There are prayers that you don't pray twice to answer. Let me tell you the kind of prayer God answers once. Lord, have your way. Ah, music to the ears of the Lord. Have your way. That's exactly because he really will have his way. But you see, you must trust him to know he will not destroy you. Look what he made out of our lives. I will worship him forever. Love him forever. Because this God is too I will worship him forever. Love him forever. Because this God is too good. You must get to it where you can lay everything look at me there are some of you you claim jesus is lord and the lord just tells you take one of your shoes out of the ten you have just take one shoe and you say no 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 god you can't do this you he's not lord brothers and sisters you will never be blessed that way as a man of god there are times they will invite you somewhere and you have all kinds of honorariums waiting and then another small gathering somewhere and god will say that's the one the gathering where you are the one who supports them after the meeting. You finish and say, I'm aware you guys don't have bike money. Take 1,000. And God says, that's the one you go to. Let me show you why many people never walk in power. The secret of power is the revelation of the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus submitted, obeyed unto death. Wherefore, God so highly exalted him. Submit your finances to the principles of God and see the wonder he will make out of your life. Submit your emotions to the control of Jesus and see what he will do with you. Submit your gift and talent. Carry all your certificates and kneel down before him and say, Lord, you are the reason why I have this masters. I put it before you. What do you want me to do with it? And God says, that's all. Somebody will stop sleeping in NMPC. It does, I don't care whether you read whatever. God will wake somebody and say, bless my child because he has now put me in control of that certificate. You can carry it on your own and move around looking for a job. And somebody will say, are you, are you with masters? Ask you, can you manage gates? Man, you say, about me? Because you are the one looking for it. But when you surrender it, surrender is powerful. I don't know how to tell you this thing. It's something I've done. Oh, listen. This man you are seeing standing before you can give God anything. Ask God. Ask him. Money, ah, that one is not even, I don't have to be a Christian to do that one. Years ago, the Lord asked me a question and said, can you give me your life? And I told him no. I honestly thought about it and I said, I can't give him my life. I can give you my heart to be persecuted i can give you my ears to hear nonsense from critics but i'm not sure i can give you my life because i was sincere and the lord did something for me believe me like paul for me now joshua selman to live is christ to die is gain god uses a business terminology for for death i won't die you you try to kill me you are wasting your time you don't know how many times they've tried to kill me but now it's not for fear I need to be alive to do many serious things for the kingdom. So it's not just fear. Oh, accident. Ask my people what happens when we are traveling. There was a time I think we were going to Lagos or so. Or we're, I think we are coming from Ibadan. The plane was shaking as if somebody was doing high jump on it. Everybody, you know, first people start being uncomfortable. Everybody just greets their neighbor. I hope you are okay. And then later on, people want to on phone and snap so that whatever happens ask them I, will, I sleep all through do you know the mysteries that surround my life to die yeah yeah paul died immediately the people left he resurrected himself and said let's let's continue don't mind these lousy people 
when he was done he said I'm ready to be poured out as a drink offering I have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up are you blessed many people reject death out of fear not the confidence of what their submission to God has brought please koinonia don't trivialize what I'm telling you if you want to see power and triumph you want to see battles being fought for you come under the authority of the Lord Jesus and see what will happen what will it cost you hold on it will cost you only one thing your ambitions yourself your will your will is the price to pay for Jesus to be Lord your will your will self I want it my way it must be my way I want to live in Abuja by myself God says go to Zamfara he says I cast that spirit Zamfara where I'm, I, I, the Bible says a land flow with milk and honey and you go to Abuja and live like an armed robber there hopping from place to place because the hand of God is not there are we together yeah to sacrifice your will is one of the hardest things for a believer to do. Thy will be done in my life. Thy will be done in my life. Lord, thy will be done in my life. This is how Christians walk. We come to God with our desires and then we arrange scriptures that will force him to have to give us our desires and we are afraid of telling him nevertheless. Lord, this is my desire but what is your opinion? We don't want it. When you can say nevertheless, Jesus is Lord of your life. Lord, I want to buy this house but nevertheless, I've died to my will. Koinonia, please hear me. I bring you to a place of power tonight when everything about your life revolves around the purposes of the kingdom where he becomes Lord over your life. Are we together? Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. So when you have your ambitions, this is how I want my life to be. This is how I want my ways to be. And God says, whatever it is, this is my plan for you. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you said the Lord. Jeremiah 29, 11. He says, they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you, you, a future. You have trusted people who don't have guarantee over your life. Why not hand everything over to him? Take now thy only son, whom thou lovest, and offer him as a burnt offering. Your journey to power is a dream until you can sacrifice all to him. Not sacrifice some. Not sacrifice the most important ones. Everything. That you get to a point today where if God says empty your, your bank account. Yes sir. You get to a point where God says sow your car or your house. Yes sir. Many carnal people will insult you and call you stupid. Where God sits down and God says look promise. I want you to get up now and go to Togo. Your life from March starts in Togo. Go and stay there. For as long as it is him, when you have lost the ability to tell God, no, he is Lord of your life. That's when you will see the power of God. That's when you will speak and have him back you. Not just because somebody laid hands on you. You know, you've heard me say it in Koinonia many times. Hold on that so many people I'm sure some of you are waiting now after service to see me and as soon as you see me you want to hold my shoe it's not there the power is not in the shoe you can carry it and go with it it's not in the shoe the power is not even in my hands coming on you the power is in a posture in the realm of the spirit a posture of complete surrender the day I stop that I will never see that power in my life again are we together Jesus, be Lord of my life. Don't just say, I, I, Lord, I know you too. You know you are Lord. He said, don't, I don't know. If you say, I am Lord, I am watching. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and will not do, do, obedience, obedience, obedience? 
This is where greed comes from. This is where selfishness comes from. This is why many people are poor. It's not because they are not business people. It's not because of this and that, all kinds of things. You know, people read all kinds of business books. Listen, let me tell you something. You know that Cononia is full of entrepreneurs here and there. There are millionaires in this place, silent millionaires just sitting looking around. They are very blessed people in this place. But I can tell you this, much more than business acumen or whatever it is, if God cannot get your heart, you are a joker as far as impact in the kingdom is concerned. So if God has declared for us as a family of faith that this is our year of triumph, then we must get to a point in our lives where all, everybody say all. Say it, say all. All. You have surrendered your will to the extent that if God looks at you and says no marriage, you say, Kai, God, this is painful, oh, but your will be done. I just said married someone. I mean, I felt the shock. It just entered some of us. I, 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 I rebuked that one. That apostle, you are going too far. Just, Abba. Lord, you have everything in this ministry. There is no instruction you will give us that we will not do. You ask the leaders. There is nothing God says to be done that will not be done. If God says empty all the ministry account savings reserves anything, Monday morning it's me that will supervise it. It will go. You can publish it in the newspaper and say, look, stupid men of God are here again. No problem. Let the stupidity yield results. We are too carnal. That's why we don't see the power of God. There's too much carnality. Sensually driven driven by intellect oh you know if you add a plus b we are intelligent beings c plus no 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 when you come to the kingdom the word of god is your modus operandi you have to live by it find out what happened to the lives of people who obeyed god in scripture mad instructions but they obeyed and god vindicated them and blessed them koinonia please hear me you must rise to a point in the name of Jesus Christ where nothing becomes too much for you to give him. I'm showing you where the devil is destroying you. Do you know why many people are poor? Because they have not handed the affairs of their finances to God. Believe me, recession is biting people, lashing out on people. And the simple reason is they have not handed over their finances to God. You believe your survival comes through your job, so it will punish you. You believe your survival comes through your uncle. So in the day you try to call your uncle and he does not pick, he said, no, nothing will kill my uncle. He has to remain alive to take care of me. You are trusting in man. Woe unto any man who puts his strength in a man. You believe what I'm telling you? This is how the Lord trained me. Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. That's what the Lord said to me. It's a promise. And he's kept it. He's kept it. Everything God gives me is not a problem for him because he knows that it belongs to him. Can God give you something and take it back? You know, it's like our little ones here. You can give them something now. They will collect and you say, give me back and they will refuse. That's how many of us are. Oh God, give me divine health. And then he says, all right, can you use it for my house? I say, no, oh God, now that I'm, I mean, uh. Esther used her beauty for the glory. When he became Lord over her beauty, she became queen. Everything Jesus becomes Lord over prospers. Whatever he's not Lord over suffers. It's a law. Everything Jesus is allowed to become Lord over prospers. To be Lord is not just to declare and say Lord. Uh -uh. To be Lord means you are willing to abide by his terms over that affairs. So over your finances, when you say Jesus is Lord, what you are saying is as far as kingdom finance is concerned, I am ready to live by all the principles. So you tithe in a delight some way. When you carry your tithe to the house of God, you don't frown as if you are going to bribe God. Jesus, I thank you for the privilege of bringing a tenth. When you are sowing a seed, when you are giving, you are knowing that I'm opening the floodgates of heaven. And Lord, I thank you. Not that you are saying, God, this money I'm giving, if no return comes, uh-uh. He is Lord. 
whether he blesses me or not believe me I cannot accuse him what will be the accusation what will be the accusation that God is not faithful if I die of sickness today the last word that will come out of my mouth is Lord you are the healer and then I'll rest society listen is full of people with high blood pressure do you know what causes high blood pressure ask the doctors they will tell you because you are in charge of your own world and there is pressure to make it work I have to pay the school fees of my child what will people say if I cannot pay it and so you go around putting yourself in trouble no no I am I am 40 years at my age I should have a car so I have to get a car I have to hustle around and so you are trying and somebody will dupe you and you will come back and almost high blood pressure no 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 people cannot say I'm buried I've been married for five years small small boys and girls are now giving birth me that I'm like their mother I would do anything and you go and meet a herbalist and you land in trouble you see how the lack of surrender to God is the reason for stress I've preached this again and again and I will repeat it brothers and sisters there is a place in Christ where men can be free I bring you to the place of freedom where you hand over everything about your life and rest you are carrying a load that is too much for you this year I must build a house whether the devil likes it or not a good plan but you are now trying to do it by the strength of the flesh you now go and borrow money from the bank as soon as you borrow money from the bank they now steal it you are in trouble no house no money high blood pressure starts and then the devil says okay let me do go and borrow another one you get into trouble by August you are almost dying you can't get up in the morning and breathe well you see someone of 27 looking like like 59 you ask him what is happening in Nigeria no it's not Nigeria it is your understanding because there are still happy people in this country is God speaking to us there are many students under pressure I must get a job by myself I must work service I'm no 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 see I want you to be look trust God's responsibility over your life a man can receive nothing except it is given to him if God does not give you a wife you can't marry well you can marry but what you will be responsible for whoever and whatever you marry if except the Lord builds if God does not give you a job you can lobby your way and get a job that will punish you your joy leaves from the day you get that job it's only God that can give you a ministry you can organize people who will steal from you criticize you they are the ones who will pay people in the newspaper to say let's confess one day we went to the back of one fence and he rubbed one oil on my face the same people I trust in him. I've handed my entire life to him. Such a realm of freedom. You put pressure on his integrity through your obedience. Lord, I obey you. If nothing happens, I said it in one of the meetings in Koinonia, never claim to be giving God the glory when you are the one taking the shame. Never claim to be giving God the glory when you are the one taking the shame. We live in a society where we are so shame conscious. Ah, look at the shame they have brought to me. That's why you will suffer for nothing. Shame, that word is a, is a word that you hear being used everywhere. Let them not say I'm not rich. Ah, sh I don't want shame. So you go and borrow money and buy bottles of minerals. And then from there the person says, look, the next day I won't talk to you again. I'm coming to come and carry my bottles in the presence of your visitors. Leave everything to God. Tonight we are going to do a handover ceremony. Not from one power to the other. Hand over of your life and destiny and say, Lord, this load is killing me. I can't sleep. God designed sleep. There are many of us here, we've not slept for days. It's not just demon spirits. Stress. Stress. You see a pastor of 100 members not sleeping. You ask him where he said, where will we get generator by Sunday? Mr. Man, you didn't call yourself. Calm down. Five minutes in the presence of God. God will get up and speak to someone. You want to borrow gen, God will bl bl instruct somebody to buy it and give you.
These are my contemplations. Please, I don't want you to take what I'm saying lightly. The secret to the power of God upon my life, aside from my love for him, is my total surrender of my will and everything in my life. I have pleaded with God, crying in the secret place, that whatever is in my life that I cannot give God, I've begged him to never give me. It is the favor I have pleaded with God to do for me. That Lord, if there is anything in my life that I will not be able to hand over to you, may it never come. That's the way of saving me. Finances, ministry, prestige, anointing, titles, reputation, influence. What is it that you cannot give God? It's the reason why the devil will destroy you. Brothers, you will hand over everything. There are many gentlemen now. There are predominantly young people here. And many brothers are out to take this year of triumph and make sure they are established. They want to force this door to open. No, you use keys. You don't use force. No, I must start ending. I'm not a small boy again. I'm, I'll be hearing this message. I must put it to work. You're about to put yourself in big trouble. I hand over my life to you. Jesus, if you don't help me, no one can help me. I will obey you and declare your lordship by allowing the word of God to dominate in me. If you have said that tithing brings favor, I will tithe and nothing will stop me. If praising you is the secret to breakthrough, I will praise you like a madman. That's his lordship over the life. Everything you believe the word of God can give you, have you applied it? Jesus is not Lord. I told you the, the, the dominion of the word in your life and the freedom with which you give the principles of the kingdom to find expression in you is the measure of the lordship of Christ in your life. I've come tonight to bring a very, very simple but profound secret to you. Koinonia, make Jesus Lord of your life experientially, not by talk. Hand over your house to him and see whether you will beg for food. Hand over your children to him and see whether he cannot pay their school fees. Hand over your education and see whether they will drive you out of the university because there's no school fees. He says, come unto me all ye that labor. Hand over your intention to build a house to him and watch somebody build a house and bring the, the, the key and give it to you. You have been trying to buy a car of 1.5 million. It's almost killing you. You raise 700,000, the devourer eats it. You raise 500,000, the devourer eats it. Why not go to God and say, Lord, there is a way this thing is done. I come to you. I come to you. Help me. And the Lord will tell you A, B, C, D. And you want a car of 1 million, God will give you a car of 10 million. And people will look at you and say, you are a thief. No, you are not a thief. He is Lord of my life. When he's Lord of your life, he takes care of you. By God's grace, I have a few people that I take care of, like my children, and I am ever faithful to their lives. Their school fees, their well-being, it is my responsibility as a father figure over their life to take care of them. And I make sure, whether they deserve it or not, I give them. Not necessarily just because I love them alone. It's a show of responsibility. So when you hand over everything to God, he will pay your bills. You hand over everything to God, he will put laughter in your face. You hand over everything from, to God, he will shield you from recession. There are people already, this February, they have received rewards that even if they got by December, they will be happy. Already, because they handed everything over to God. I've handed Koinonia and I do that to him all the time. When I'm preparing for every service, I say, Lord Jesus, I am before you. I'm a small child before you. There are people listening, thousands of people waiting to be blessed all over the world. And Lord, I'm asking that you only use me. Speak through me. And I carry that sincere heart and come before him. And the results are remarkable. Results that not even me myself can account for. This is the key to ease in life. Surrender all. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you, I'm withholding nothing, withholding nothing, I'm withholding nothing, 
sing it I surrender all I surrender all hand over the ministry and rest hand over the business and rest hand over the children's school fees hand over your business and rest we hold nothing sing it one more time to him hand over the relationship and rest hand over the marriage and rest hand over the projects and rest hand over your desire for the anointing rest 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 will you give your life away that's what he's asking you tonight koinonia will you give your life away so it's your turn to respond to him now Lord, I give myself away. I give myself away. But, Apostle, you don't understand. If I don't pay the rent by tomorrow, they are going to drive me. If God wakes that landlord from sleep, that's only when he can come to you. The landlord will sleep for eight hours. What guarantee does he have that he will wake up? Brothers and sisters, listen. I want you to trust God. The carnality has killed unbelief from believers. I trust him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Whatever God cannot give me cannot be given by any man. No matter who deceives you. Some may trust in horses. Some may trust in chariots. He said, but we will trust in the name of our God. Hallelujah. Get to a point of reckless abandon. You hand over everything and say, Lord, I'm tired of sleepless nights. You are not the first God has called into ministry. Lord, what if people don't come for this program? My reputation is at stake. Uh -uh, uh -uh. You are the one who called yourself. Lord, what if I don't make it? People would think I'm not successful. Yourself, your flesh, your ego is the very reason you will never step into it. I show you the mystery of ease submission to the lordship of christ jesus submitted himself philippians 2 5 obedient unto death when there is nothing else to withhold from him then he will give you everything everything Kai. everything everything this god can surprise men have you not read it in your bible listen listen you know i have watched and, and let me say this with all humility I have watched the way God is raising mighty people in this ministry. Especially in the area of finances. In the last three or four months, I have been shocked at how many millionaires God has produced in this ministry. Raising, I'm talking of ordinary people. Not just people who have any necessary acumen. Because he found men who can say, Lord, everything that you have, everything I have belongs to you. Trust me, let me be your treasurer. The last treasurer betrayed you. Let me be another one. Trust me. And God says, you are doing this for me? There are people entering unbelievable dimensions of the anointing. You know why? Because they have said, Lord, bless me. It's not about myself. It's for your glory. Bless me. I surrender my crowns. Men may clap for me, but I consciously take those crowns and drop them. Every time, especially after the miracle service, no matter how late, when I go home, after everyone has gone and left me alone, I never lie down and sleep. I have my little chair that is like my altar. I just kneel down and I say, I kneel to the doer of these wonders. People are in their houses discussing me and say, my God, what a great man. And I kneel down. Sometimes people pile all kinds of seeds. There are all kinds of envelopes and I just drop all of them on the ground. I said, Lord, this belongs to you. They gave the wrong person, but please make it right because I hand it over to you. It belongs to you. And God says, you do this for me, ready for the next level. 
Some of us have stayed in one level of the anointing forever. You are anointed, but there is no growth because that is the level God has seen that he will be glorified. When he takes you to another level, you become Lord of yourself. We are going to pray. I told you it's a handover service tonight. Lay down your burdens. It's killing you. Lay down your burdens. It's killing you. What you are praying for, somebody got it today as a testimony. Why not you? Please listen to what I'm telling you. And you will watch God bless you. It's the antidote to recession. You will get up and move around. You are sleeping. God will wake somebody else and say, have you considered my servant promise? I want you not just to bless him one time, but so, so, so amount from your salary goes to him for as long as I bless you. And he's minding himself. This is the mystery some of us walk in that people just look at our lives and say, how are these people doing it? It's the mystery of death to allow him be Lord. How many of us are willing to say, Lord, you have your way in my life. Rise up on your feet. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Oh, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Over my finances. Over my relationships. Over the ministry you have given. Over your education. Over your children. Over your marriage. Over Kaduna State. Over Nigeria. Have your way. Oh Lord. Have your way. Listen to me. The Bible says, Come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Look up, we're going to pray some prayers, but so as to conserve time, I'm going to make an altar call while we pray. There are people here who are not even talking about lordship like surrender of everything. You need to make a genuine decision for Jesus. Inside, outside, you're listening to me. Online, you have never truly said, look, I'm, I'm tired of managing my life. I hand it over to Jesus. There are others, peradventure, at a point in your life, you have handed over certain aspects of your life. But right now, you are saying, Lord, I'm tired of one leg in, one leg out. I am determined to give you everything. As we begin to pray for every other person, those sets of people, inside and outside, clear the way for them. Please, I want you to rush and make your way to the front right here. I want to pray with you. Make sure you don't sit back because God is talking to you. The remaining people lift your voice and begin to thank God. Everyone lift your voice and begin to thank God. Those coming for the altar call, make your way quickly. Don't think about it. He's calling you. I show you the key to safety like the ark of Noah. Lord, I am tired. Tonight, I'm ready to let go everything. Make your way to the front. Every other person lift your voice and pray. Please, as you come and stand here, be praying too. Oh Lord, have your way. Sing it one more time. Have your way, Lord. Receive 
Jesus. It pays to be serious with Jesus. It's not about being a Christian. It pays. Jesus said this, I am the way, not a way. I am the truth. Any other thing is a lie. You will see it with time. He says, and I am life. Brothers and sisters, listen. There are some of you standing here. This will be your first time. You have had preachers make altar calls. After altar calls. Some of you have even responded to other altar calls. But you've not been genuinely serious. And today you are saying, no, no, no. I can't play games again. There are others at one point in your life. You came out for an altar call. But you know your life has gone haywire. The Holy Spirit is still telling me there are still a few more people that are supposed to come and join these people in front. And he's speaking to them and they are sitting back. A handover ceremony to say, Lord, I'm tired. I can't keep pretending. Those of you in front, I want to lead you to make a serious decision for Jesus. Whether you are making it the first time or whatever it is, please make it genuine. Some of you are crying, it doesn't matter. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Lift your right hand high to the heavens and say this from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you and I believe that you are the Son of God. This night, I hand over my life, everything about it, unto you. I declare that you are my savior and I make you my Lord, the owner of my life, the master of my life, the leader of my life. Help me, help that lady under the anointing. In the name of Jesus, I declare that I am a child of God. I declare that I'm tired of suffering. I hand over my life to you from today forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted. Father, these ones have publicly come out. They are not playing games with you. They mean business with you and they are handing over their entire lives and destinies to you. Lord, I present these destinies before you. You who is the master manager of any man's life. I pray that you bring beauty and glory out of their lives. I pray in the name of Jesus that beauty will be replaced for ashes in their lives. In the name of Jesus. I declare your sins forgiven and I declare that you are empowered to reign. You are empowered to experience the reality of the life of God. From today, no going backwards. You move forward ever. In the name of Jesus. Look at me. Please, I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. You're going to have a few people right now. Praise the Lord. And just obey what they tell you to do. And they're going to have your details. We're going to get to you and follow you up more warmly. Please just follow them. Follow them. God bless you. Follow them. Everyone, we're going to pray. Please, we don't have time while they are going. Everyone, say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that wants to make me the Lord of my own life, the controller of my own life, the master over my life, I challenge you now in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and begin to pray. The spirit of pride, the spirit of fear, make sure you are praying. Self-centeredness. An egocentric personality that makes you ashamed of handing it over to Jesus. Lord, I lay down my pride tonight. 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 I lay down, lay down my pride tonight. Tired of mismanaging my life. Are you praying? Shake it back at the balada. Rekata kata prata balada 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 balada. Hey, break it, 
Hallelujah. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, I hand over every pain, every disappointment, every burden, every concern that I've been unable to manage. I hand it over to you. Please help me do something about it. Lift your voice and pray. Oh yes. Call on to me and I will answer. Call on to me and I will answer. And I will show you. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. The maker of heaven. The maker of heaven and earth. Pray, Koinonia. in the name of Jesus I receive grace to be a word compliant Christian I receive grace for obedience total obedience total obedience I declare the dominion of the word of God over my decisions I declare the dominion of the word of God over my life, over my destiny. Open your mouth and receive that grace. No argument with the word of God. Final authority. Unquestionable authority. Final authority. Unquestionable authority. Hallelujah. While standing, let me just tell you two benefits of the revelation of the Lordship of Christ. Number one, confidence. Confidence. When Jesus is Lord over your life, the same confidence a Jimmy's daughter has leaning on her father is the same confidence. Whenever you see any confident man in the kingdom, he has given all. That's why he's not afraid. Many terrorists can blow themselves because they know the worst that can happen. And they have said, let the worst go places. What do you do with a man who is not afraid of dying? The last enemy to be destroyed. That man has conquered it. There's nothing you can do with him. Are we together? Confidence. This fear, this timidity can be solved when Jesus becomes Lord. Oh, I know my destiny is great. Not just because you have gone there. The Lord when archangel michael came and they were fighting over the body of moses in the book of jude archangel michael looked at um, 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 lucifer and he said he would not charge a railing accusation but he said the lord rebuke you i invoke the authority that is higher than me to rebuke The Lord rebuke you. Confidence. You can turn and tell every mountain standing before you, the Lord rebuke you. You see? And then you have that confidence. Number two, 
it is the basis for true Bible faith. The Lordship of Jesus. The basis for true Bible faith. Taking action based on your conviction. The Lord said it. He said, go and tell them to lose the coat. And if they ask you, tell them the Lord, the master has need of it. The owner who created it. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's. The earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof. When Paul had an encounter, Saul, in the way of Damascus, he said, Lord, acknowledge his authority. There are some of you, when this becomes a revelation, brothers and sisters, you will see miracles upon miracles in your life. You will look and wonder and say, I did not feel anything. What happened? You subscribe to a revelation that produces wonders in your life. You lift up your voice to pray and God takes someone's prayer request and gives it to you as a gift. Before you lift your voice, it's like God owes you his presence. Because you have gotten to a point where everything belongs to him. Kill greed from your life in the name of Jesus. Kill self-centeredness from your life. Kill this pressure of trying to protect your reputation. No, that's the way to death. Jesus, I have declared your word to your people. I pray in the name of Jesus that the Spirit of God will cause this word to truly minister in our hearts. That years after today, we will be able to look back and say, I handed everything over to him and that's the secret to my joy and peace. May that be your testimony in the name of Jesus. And because you have done that, I prophesy over every challenge. Let me speak to the mountains over your life for one minute. I decree and declare that now that you have consciously handed everything over to God, I prophesy to every mountain that stands before you, in the name of the Lord whom you have made captain over your life, I command that mountain to become a level playing ground. Any kind of mountain regardless, Lord, let impossible situations be solved right now. In the name of Jesus, there are people, oh God, who need a miracle before tomorrow morning. I command that that miracle be established right now. In the name of Jesus. Make sure you are praying. Libros kada barakota shebre diskalia da barodos. Shabras kada balako shibria da bash. Are you praying? Those online connect, connect and pray. Shabakota sada balakota prianda gadas. Zedebekatos kalabrianda da bush. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your grace. In the kapa sata baka prata ko sada baria da gato freske de balados. Jesus, we bless you. Manda kapa ro sada bako te shega de baladabos. Shaka te para kata frata kata para da baka sada brada gata gata baka ta pras kada balus. Shebros kapa o shata rakota sabre dish kala baria da bagos. Jesus, we exalt you. The healer, deliverer. Zebros kaparu shata furianda katafraska da balada bos. The captain of our salvation, the one who can turn anything around. We bless you. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy. Holy, 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 is the Lord, is the Lord, God the Lord God Almighty 
my life is full my life is full my life is full hey, and the people say holy holy and the people say holy 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 and the people say holy holy is the Lord is the Lord My life is full of your glory. My life is full of your glory. Prophesy to yourself. My life is full of your wonders. My life is full, yeah. My life is full. Full of your wisdom, my life is full of your Holy Spirit. We declare tonight that you have absolute unrestrained access to our spirits, to our minds, and to our bodies. For you are the one given to us by Jesus to help us understand the kingdom, to help us understand his power, to help us understand the majesty and the realities of the spirit. We thank you. We honor your presence. We honor your wisdom. Lord, I pray that tonight you will open us up again to the mysteries of the kingdom. May we encounter your power. May we encounter your light. Turn us into signs and wonders. Do this and bring glory to the Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please keep standing. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Just two verses. And then we'll sit down. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Paul made a statement. He said, let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ, number one, and then he calls the stewards, custodians. A steward is one who has been trusted with something. There are men that the Bible calls stewards of the mysteries of God. Stewards. Like I give you a Bible, I say, please hold it for me. And every time they are looking for that Bible, they make reference to you because you have been made a steward. In Matthew 25, he made other stewards of his financial resources. Is that true? So the Bible says, let a man, please keep it there, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ. But then much more than that, that we are stewards words of the mysteries of God. Verse 2 says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Faithful in what? Faithful in communicating those mysteries. Moreover, it is required that if at any point by the grace of God, you are made a steward of any dimension of the mysteries of God, your assignment among other things is faithfulness. To make sure that you continually communicate those mysteries until the people that God has committed to your care rise to the reality. You see, stewards are dispensers. The, the whole idea is not for them to keep it. It is that it flows to the people. It's just that by the election of grace, they are the communicators of this reality. Stewards of the mysteries of God. Not stewards of preaching. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. With all humility, there are preachers, but there are stewards of the mysteries of God. 
Are we together? You know that a dimension of God was allocated to certain personalities. And the Bible encourages them to be faithful, unbending, ensuring that people enter that dimension. I'd like you to open your mouth and cry to God in one minute. And say, Lord, the dimension of the mystery that has been committed, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Are we praying? Lord, we thank you and we accept with all humility the privilege of being stewards of the mysteries. Stewards of the mysteries, the secrets of God. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Good evening, everybody. We're in for a serious time tonight. Just smile at someone close to you and say good evening. Are we together? Praise the Lord. It's always my joy to bring the word of the Lord. I remain faithful to this task. See grants grace in Jesus' name. I just want to specially appreciate Honorable. Honestly, it was a big surprise. God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord. All the way from Adamawa State through Abuja and he gave us a big surprise. God bless you, sir. Thank you. John Terry from Adamawa State House of Assembly. God bless you, sir. The Lord honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In this kingdom, we rise not just by desire, but how much light we have accessed and engaged not only accessed i used to say accessed alone but i found out that was not very accurate we rise in this kingdom not just by how much light is available but how much light we have accessed and engaged you can access it meaning you are not in ignorance of his operation but not engage it you will not see anything we rise in this kingdom, brothers and sisters, on the strength of the light, the illumination, the precepts of the kingdom that we have both accessed and engaged. Accessing it is a product of humility and desperate pursuit, but engaging it is the product of faith. Accessing the word is not faith. It gives you potential to manifest faith until you begin to engage the word. I've said it that faith is simply a product of understanding, obedience, and courage. Understanding. You cannot act upon what you do not understand sustainably. Obedience. The ability to do to the latter and the courage to stay there regardless of the temporary results that you see. Are we together? So may I remind us again that desire is not enough to rise in the kingdom. I desire to encounter the anointing. Wonderful. But that in itself will never expose you to dimensions of the anointing. I desire to encounter the spirit of revelation. Wonderful. But that will not bring you into those dimensions. I desire to walk in kingdom wealth and prosperity wonderful but that will not bring it that way i desire to live long i desire to live strong i desire to be a leader i desire to be great our society is full of desire that's wonderful it's a good starting point except for the fact that desire alone will not amount to anything people desire to be anointed they desire to be blessed they desire to receive miracles. They desire deliverance. They desire healing. But they stop at the level of desire and then believe that that's all they need to do. No. Desire sponsors the appetite and the fortitude for pursuit. When there is desire, you will defy every excuse. You will defy every consequence and pursue. Your pursuit gives you access. Your desire gives you the inner strength, the tenacity, the staying power to pursue information, pursue light, pursue an encounter. Are we together? 
then if and when you have that encounter you have access to it now the next thing is to your understanding to work to engage that truth you know the engaging part is where i truly believe that the church of the lord jesus christ has failed very well i have said it again and again that i don't believe the church of god is in ignorance necessarily by the grace of god the servants of god scattered around nigeria africa and the world have done well commendably well in being faithful dispensers of the mysteries of the kingdom are we together yes we give that credit to all the pastors the prophets the apostles the teachers and all the people who have contributed in supplying dimensions to the body of christ bridging the ignorance that is in the body but the results have not been very significant because we have stopped at the level of access and we believe that the moment you find truth automatically it should produce result no sir no sir truth must be engaged engaged to produce this mic has great potential to amplify my voice so that people can hear both within this vicinity and then through the power of the internet across the nations of the world but until this device is engaged accordingly not engage as you wish there is a pattern engage accordingly then it releases the full strength of it i can drop this mic and shout and there is a mic that is capable of amplifying my voice but i can turn and live a very very hard life i have access to the mic but i have not engaged it accordingly is that true so please let us deliver ourselves from this this um, is a combination of pride and folly that sweeps across the body of christ that because we have accumulated a compendium of a lot of knowledge it automatically means that our lives will be a reflection no sir accumulation of spiritual information does not produce result it is the supply of the grace and the advantage of that grace that you take to engage to engage engaging is very important to engage means to put the, the word of god to work you engage it and stay there then it is at the point of engaging the word that god's integrity is committed there are many people when you teach on tithing they will help you finish the message but they don't engage it they don't do it they do it occasionally how about those who do not engage the power of speaking the word in faith how many people know about the mystery of a dance the mystery of praise how many people really do it is that true it is the doing that's why when an evangelist finishes preaching it doesn't say now that you have listened to me you are going to heaven you can be in that crusade ground and go to hell you can even be part of the organizer and still go to hell at the end of it he gives room for engaging are you here and you want to give your heart to the lord and then people come out it is only those who come out that we pray for we bless everybody but we pray for those who come out as a sign that the message has touched them they have understood and they have responded in acts chapter 4 the bible says that paul and peter and 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 john they were on their way to the temple and whilst they passed the beautiful gate the bible says they saw a man that had been crippled from birth there at the gate asking for arms and the bible says that he requested that they helped him you know like beggars would do and then peter looked at him and said silver and gold i do not have any but such as i have i give unto you in the name of jesus he said rise up and walk access but the man was there the bible never said he got up then the bible says peter help me pastor alpha peter held his hands and forced him to engage you see it is at the point of obedience that the power is released not when the word just comes this is the dynamics of results until the word of god is engaged with faith and understanding the word of god is as barren as whatever it is 
So the Bible says he held his hands and while he motioned on him to rise. You see that? At that point, the Bible says he leaping stood. That guy would have remained there and the apostles would have gone. The power of God hovering around. How about God? Genesis chapter 1. The Bible says there was darkness from the Hebrew word tohu wabohu. Darkness, confusion. And then the Bible says the spirit of God, the very force that is responsible for results and creation was hovering around. But no change happened until God said. And God acted. He engaged and said, let there be light. Be light. Appear. Reappear. And then there was that and he said it and he saw it. Believers are largely not in ignorance. So while we seek to open the body of Christ to greater frontiers of revelation, I am very concerned about our engaging the ones we know already. Because the truth of the matter is that if we commit ourselves diligently, our life should begin to command certain levels of notable results. You see, the Bible talks about a certain group of people. It says they are ever learning. Is God blessing us already? Ever learning, meaning that they have an appetite. And that's supposed to be a good thing. An appetite to explore. Let's go deeper. Wonderful. Let's go higher. Wonderful. But the question is, what do you do with all the conferences and conventions and meetings and Sunday services, Wednesday prayer meetings? Many believers receive prophecies. They receive words. They study the Bible. They read books. They have volumes and volumes of jottings. Access. But they do not engage. And so at the end of it, they are disappointed, they are angry at themselves and at God. And they are almost tempted to say, Lord, your word did not work. And God says, no, 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 let's be fair. Show me what you did. From January till now, how many times did you tithe? Say, Lord, let's not talk about that one. Just did you bless me or not? And God says, look at it. Lord, you didn't heal me from the pain. And God said, did you do what was told to do? The day an instruction was given to celebrate and praise. When the Bible says rejoice in the Lord, how many times did you commit yourself to obeying it? Rejoicing not just as what you want to do, but as a key to your breakthrough. Are we together? Engaging the word. Let me tell you something. The Bible says the kingdom of God, that you have to become like a child. Do you know why? Um... In our civilized 21st century society where we are so right conscious, we don't want anybody violating on anything. I, I, you know, don't violate me. I'm a citizen. I'm intelligent. I went to school. We are so right conscious. It's very difficult for us to submit ourselves to the simplicity of the truth of God's word. Are we together now? The word of God declares this is what must be done to receive this outcome. We argue we explain intellectually. We bring all kinds of even spiritual and theological dissertations to explain away the simplicity. And God says, well, I'm not the one in need. You are the one who is looking for the solution. Look how difficult we make it to get the anointing. Look how difficult we make it to be prosperous. Look how difficult we make it to rise. Look how difficult we make it to get the power of God. Let me tell you the truth. The difficulty is that I think sometimes we preachers do not show people where to engage the word. We dispense the word. But at the end of it, we do not leave our sermons with the action point. The very point. And that's where members don't like. That's why we like prophecies a lot. Because it's an extension of our desire to refuse to act upon the word. Most members hate it when you commit to them and say, okay, I have shown you. This is now how you engage. And they say, no, no, can't you, just, what is, prophesy this thing and let me move forward. I don't know how many people I counsel and I tell them, oh, apostle, this is what is going on. This is this and that. And I tell them, okay, uh, go to the media stand, pick one or two messages, listen to it and come back. I see how they turn and greet somebody and just move around. And highest, they check around and see um, if there is an opportunity for a joke. And they, you know, believers 
we are spiritually lazy. Not because we don't fast and we don't pray. But that point of engaging the word. One of the greatest blessings of the life and the ministry of Bishop David Oyedeko in my life is that among other things, his nature of dispensing the word is such that he shows you what to do. Good master, the rich man said, what must I do to be saved? He wasn't saying, can I save myself? Lord, I know that it is within your character to partner with men. Where is my own part of the deal? We hate this talk. And you know, the Western world, may God bless them. We have received so much from them. But I think that this, this error of allowing God to do everything to show his sovereign claiming that and whether we add anything to it or not it cannot be done no brothers and sisters listen the bible says the heavens even the heaven of heavens is the lord it says but the earth has he given to the sons of men there will always be a cooperation a partnership between god and men for anything serious to happen god is still sovereign but he has chosen to limit himself so that men can also be reflectors of his glory Please learn this. If anything is to change in your life, it is not all up to God. There is a part where you have access to light and then engage that light. Access to it and you engage it. Not access alone. We have done pretty well in understanding it. So as I dispense these truths by the grace of God, alongside all the men and women of God scattered in this nation and around the world, please, i like us to make a commitment that we will not only be hearers, we will not only be receivers in terms of just hearing it into our ears, but that we will always search for the areas that will require our own partnership. Your partnership with the word of God does not negate what God has done. Your partnership with the word of God is what makes it your experience until you partner with the word of god it remains a prophecy or a promise it is your engaging the word that converts every promise to your testimony to your experience right from the foundations of the earth the lamb has been slain but the day you hand over your life to jesus that's the day salvation becomes your experience is that true the bible says by his stripes we are healed but the day you hear the word you receive it and engage appropriately the bible says again and again that the lord gives men power to prosper but this is not our experience for many of us in the body of christ the day we are willing to not only receive the precepts but sustain the grace you see this is the, this is the true idea of grace i told you grace is like love grace has love has depth height that's how grace is there is a dimension of god's grace that is his unmerited favor or unmerited access that means god kept that dimension exclusive to himself because there is absolutely nothing any man can do for instance the grace that saves men are we together now there is nothing a man can do by his own strength to save himself you can only partner but there is a dimension of grace that is an empowerment to do you will do the doing it's just that the energy is not yours now this is the dimension of the grace of god that the body of christ has not understood so he empowers you with a capacity that is more than what you ordinarily would do then he will grant you grace so he supplies that grace are we together now yes if i prophesy to pastor alpha now i am operating i am doing the speaking it is willing he's not opening my mouth i'm opening my mouth by myself but i am communicating an intelligence that is not given to mere men that intelligence you call it the gift of the spirit you call it the prophetic is what the bible calls grace the power to do the power to do bless you sir are we together if we begin to pay attention to engaging the things we already know brothers and sisters i submit to you that our lives will be a thousand times better than it is in every wise the problem truly speaking is not 
ignorance i told you again and again and i'll continue to say it i do not believe the body of christ as a corporate entity is in ignorance there are still greater lands to conquer in the spirit there are still deeper dimensions that god will open us but you see the system of god is he studies what you have done with what he has given you first and that qualifies you to receive more the parable of the five two and one talent the bible says that when he granted unto them stewardship the one with five talents engaged correct the one with two talents engaged the one with one talent just buried it and left it there when the master came for accountability he said well um you were a hard man you like reaping where you don't sow so i i just thought instead of wasting my time i kept it on the guy can go and remove your thing collect your thing the bible says they collected it from that man and gave it to the one with five talents so you see increase is a product of doing something with the grace and the dimension god has given you a pastor who will not pastor two members or ten members with all his heart and bless them and sits down pasting pictures of a million members is joking and dreaming a man of god who will not engage diligently god gives you ten thousand naira you mismanage it carelessly you do not find out the principles of god there's nothing in it for god there is no system of accountability and wise use of it you can't sit down and be mesmerizing on one million ten million god does not work like that are we together how about anointings there are men of god who admire their whole assignment is more power and god says calm down the grace i've given you is enough to save souls even if it can't heal sick bodies now show how you have engaged that grace enough to be able to open you up to other access and say lord what is salvation anybody can do it then god grants you the grace for intercession and he said, Lord, that one is too hard. I need power, direct, raw power to just prophesy or lay hands. And God says, no, it will never work that way. Never work that way. God is revealing to us as simple as what I'm sharing is. God is showing us the reason why the issues of our lives don't change. It's not because the word of God has failed. It is because we seldom engage the word. We complain we receive the word let me tell you what most of us do you know when when people complain about certain areas i ask them have you listened to this my teaching before i finish they smile and the person is not getting the result and he will listen now he say ah, have you listened to um, um 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 evidence of genuine intimacy they help you finish it <laughs> and you look at this guy and you know that this guy doesn't know god for sure are we together now yes then you tell him go and listen to it and he plays around while he's just listening distracted doing a lot of things gisting with friends and then catching up and then he tells you sir i just finished there are there are certain teachings one hour teaching but i finished them in three days one hour teaching in three days because every five five minutes i'm stopping jesus something just entered my spirit i see I was studying something there and I almost jumped, I almost jumped from my bed. I said, yeah, yeah, what is this? He said, I've not read this Bible before. I had to look at it again. I found my Bible, drilled the thing again. I don't know what I caught years ago that made me draw it, but that ink was already fading. I drew a fresh one to remind me that this is a fresh revelation. What? This is the Bible? Opened up another light for me. You finish a three hours message you never pause <laughs> to listen to learn even when something is very powerful you are just saying, wow just continue even the way you study in school brothers and sisters that's not how you do well you pause the psalmist will say sila pause ponder think write if need be pray if need be hallelujah if you don't like what I'm saying, forget about results. God is not a herbalist. Hallelujah. Yes. Look at the aspects of your life. You will see that there are certain areas you are in total ignorance. But you will see that there are certain areas you already have the requisite knowledge, truthfully speaking. 
you already know what to do and the grace has been supplied but that spiritual nature that laziness to comply accordingly and stay until results manifest that's what causes a lot of trouble what do you have in your house nothing except a cruise of oil and the prophet said that's it madam this is what i want you to do go why didn't the prophet prophesy vessels find your way to this poor woman's house say madam carry the energy you have left and go and borrow vessels he said borrow not a few when she came she met him and said sir i've done as you have said he said now you qualify for the next instruction close your door she would never receive the next instruction if she did not obey the last one is god speaking to us yeah and he said close the door when you close the door start engaging the oil the oil has capacity to give you any kind of miracle but when engaged and the bible says she kept pouring and the kept multiplying how about the widow in Zarephath? when the prophet came he said woman how are you fine sir water please ah i don't have much but i'm a generous woman and just bake the remaining bread for me he said we're about to eat with my son to die he said madam i'm i'm here not because i'm hungry i'm here so that you will survive so just handle this treasure is in eating vessels you better quickly come and feed me first the woman would have said you are such a heartless and stupid man you are the prophet they've been talking about you are a wicked man i would make sure i tell all those who have you are ah, ah, you would see me and a child you don't even love women and start another funny women movement and say look there are prophets who don't they collect things from women and the bible says that she had engaging that thing all of a sudden she turned and discovered that the flower i'm showing you how this works how about three days they spent three days on the mountain and then the people said these guys are hungry there will be commotion here now and jesus said feed them said, ah, feed them even a year's worth of food no miracle could happen until there there was something from men and andrew found a young boy and carried his bread his, his lunch box as they call it and all of a sudden jesus lifted it and gave thanks and there was multiplication who taught you that things happen by themselves it is the dynamics of the workings in terms of god's part that is none of your business the bible says just as you do not know the way bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child nor the way of the wind that's how you cannot tell the work of god there is a part of this equation that you can never know it is sponsored by the wisdom of god for instance how your destiny helper will come is not your business your own is to engage what brings them your destiny helper can be a donkey a donkey needs to be missing for you to find samuel doesn't matter you think if god asks saul to choose how he will receive the anointing will he choose the the disappearance of a donkey leave the acting to god your own is obey to the latter and then you will watch god use anything to act that drama until you receive the anointing let me tell you where spiritual fatigue comes when we want to know how the details how will i pay my rent lord i know you are faithful but let's let's be honest here and god is saying me you are telling me to be honest <laughs> do you believe what i'm saying yes so we don't engage the word at all at all master if it be thou bid me come and jesus said really you want to see a new dimension i've given you a word engage it come all of them stood and said oh yeah he didn't say peter come he just said come whoever walked he said come and all of a sudden peter got up and walked and it was it it was surprising peter i'm walking and he was laughing and all of a sudden he was about sinking many people see the sinking part they don't see the part that jesus stopped him from sinking because he had to be responsible over his word peter's mistake at the point of obedience had to be addressed by jesus himself if peter sank jesus would be to blame after all jesus knew he was learning 
he said come obey him and perish and watch whether you will really perish listen learn this i'm teaching you how faith works peter he held him and said no if you walked on your own like jonah jonah was not helped because he was in disobedience so the whale swallowed him what bailed jonah out was mercy are we together these are the systems of the kingdom this is how it works guys go and preach in my name heal the sick cast out devils and jesus ah, jesus won't you go with us say no 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 just go i've given you my name say where is it say just believe keep going and when they met the first sick person um my name is Peter. you saw me with that other guy he really sent us i'm not really sure about this i've not mastered it but i hope you are not offended if i prayed for you and peter laid hands on someone and all of a sudden to his shock peter said this thing is working let's do it again they returned back to jesus and said hi jesus even the devils that we fear so much were subject to us in thy name and jesus said that those are little issues let's talk about don't rejoice because of that be honest with yourself tonight is it really that god has not been faithful or you have not engaged the word you have been told that prayer and fasting are keys for true revival and spiritual power be honest with yourself have you engaged it with understanding don't sit down and say, God is not anointing me. What do you think? The anointing is not a charm. You eat anything, anywhere, anyhow, anytime. No, sir. No, sir. How about breakthrough? There are many of us that want breakthrough. You hear people, the fact that God is doing it to one person. That per you see, do you know why we allow testimonies? the most important part of testimonies is not the result is the bridge between the problem and the solution what did the person do that's what your spirit should be sensitive about for many of us we wait till the end of it then we say wow you mean it this is how i live my life i don't sit down and tell god lord create the changes i say no lord i know i give you all the praise show me my own part and i stand up and start engaging it start engaging it start engaging it what of our family members oh god will you keep watching us like this and god says no listen to joshua selman oh god i don't have the time i'm like i was saying will you keep changing our lives and god says you are violating an ordinance it's not going to change husband is standing wife is standing children are standing devil is destroying that family and wrecking their lives they are arguing with one another and not interested in change and god says listen when it comes to this thing you can't help yourself it is by a prophet that the lord brought them out of egypt and by a prophet they were preserved even if you are a midwife when you are about to give birth you need another midwife to help you that you are a midwife does not mean you can deliver yourself listen to this and understand there are systems in the kingdom a time comes when your personal anointing cannot give you the breakthrough you are looking for. is god helping us so so many people arrogantly sit down and say what is there is it not man of god man is it not the same jesus that died for us and they sit down there and their problems continue to compound and multiply whereas there is enough grace to trivialize that problem and reduce 10 years of problems in a moment how long please help me how long listen i think it was in it was in mina over the weekend we were preaching for um bishop it was it was such a an awesome time with him and uh, bishop achaya and i was sharing there i said every anointing listen to me every challenge has the level of anointing that can address it 
that you are anointed is not generic in results. The anointing is levels. When your challenges are higher than your level of anointing or the level of anointing close to you, you're already in trouble. There are three ways to come out of that thing. Grow in the anointing to a level where it can surmount it or trust God for access to personalities whose price in the spirit has granted them access to the level of grace that can throw away that problem. Brothers and sisters, in my little life, I've had the privilege of seeing what the anointing of the spirit, how it can rubbish a situation that is within the level, the jurisdiction of that anointing to solve it. Almost in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, and that challenge is gone. But I've also seen how frustrated an anointed man can be in the face of a challenge that is higher than your level of anointing. It will rubbish you as if you have never met God. Believe what I'm teaching you. If the mysteries of the kingdom are not engaged, this family now will get up and say, okay, we have read in the Bible. And let me tell you what happens. They begin to pray. At least it's a starting point. While they pray, the Holy Ghost will take the mother or the father to a scripture and said, study the life of Saul of Kish. Do everything they did. And so they start studying. A donkey was missing. We, for us, an animal was not missing. Let me show you how the, the Holy Spirit helps people. What is missing? Joy, peace, love, breakthrough, finances, spiritual upliftment. What did they do? They started moving around and a servant said, let's go and meet a man of God. And the Holy Spirit says, go and do likewise. And they stand up and the Holy Spirit now tells them, look, there's a miracle service coming. You see, the word of God is becoming alive. You are acting. You can sit down at home and say, God has brought it. He said we should go for the miracle service and then give all kinds of flimsy excuses. It is raining. I'm not very happy. I didn't eat well. We were not joyful yesterday. Those things are the ways demon spirits keep people. But when you stand up as you are walking to come, heaven is recording your obedience and already scheduling the system for your miracle. Now, while you are coming, you are not even sure you will meet me, but you are coming anyway. While you are coming, you are not even sure you will have space. But you are coming anyway. Are you seeing how this thing works? You come anyway and you sit down. And to your greatest shock, it was never for you to meet me. While the praise and worship is on, fire lands on your situation. And all of a sudden, you see someone calling you repeated calls and you have to avoid it. After Konya or whatever program, you just go and check and someone is calling you and saying, sir, Remember, we were supposed to strike a deal and it didn't work. I, my spirit was moving me and you say, God, this is you. Let me show you how breakthrough happens. Breakthrough is worked. It's like the working of miracles. You know how you cook food. You don't drop onions, pepper, fish, whatever it is you drop on the table and just shout and say, food, cook. No, you work it. How do you work it? You get a pot firewood or whatever you are using you start engaging sometimes it will be painful as you are cutting something knife can cut you but you are more interested in the food than that temporary pain it's by eating the food the pain will be healed so continue and at the end of it you have a lovely meal and everybody who comes around wonders brothers and sisters it is true that God gave grace but you worked it are we together this part of engaging the word is what I want. I want to drum it into our spirits. Nothing will change in your life just because you are a Christian. The word of God must be engaged. Hallelujah. Mm. Sacrifices, praise, several things. You must engage the word of God. There are some of us here, you have never sown a seed I'm not saying to me, please don't get what I'm saying. But you have never, most of us is 95% receiving, 5% giving. You will be broke forever. That's the equation of poor people. Are we together? Yes. 
give me your own is to collect lord who is going to give me and the lord says when are you going to create your own harvest have you not heard that if the cloud be full of rain if you use a spoon to spend to send vapor to the air you will spend your whole life there are other people who don't allow challenges to last they walk it till it gives up they walk it till it gives up I believe in results i'm motivated by results i'm very very outspoken about results i'm not one of those people who lie to you and say it doesn't matter it matters sir results matter human beings were designed to remain motivated when what you engage produces is that true yes when a woman gets pregnant we're happy for her pregnancy and we can endure everything that the pregnancy carries provided there will be a child at the end is that true yes when somebody like the people sharing now the lady that was sharing about the rigor that she went through you know now the most important thing is that finally the result is cleared and all of that when you do things the pain is when you put so much energy and time and then it does not yield results this is what i want to cancel from our life hallelujah breakthroughs are predictable hmm. the help of god is predictable the mercy of god is predictable results are predictable please my brother my sister let me beg us in the name of jesus to not sit down and hope things change i'm delivering you from it because after 10 years it will remain like that until it changes there are people who as of january this year wrote down a list of certain things they submitted it and asked questions lord how do i engage with you and right now god has ticked those things with results there are others all they do every miracle services god arise for me they drop it every instruction god gave from january till now they have not done one lift up your hands they won't lift up pray they won't pray celebrate god dance around you know, all these things how can i be a child we left these things am i in a party see that i told you about dancing i don't like dancing it's not anything i admire at all but it's a it's a key you know how drugs are how you swallow drugs sometimes when you swallow drugs especially maybe a syrup it can be so bitter especially when you are giving children they are trying to deny but your love keeps them there swallow it when they swallow it you pamper them later on swallow it do you pity the child oh yeah i'll leave you like that no that's how it is when you are obeying god don't pity yourself oh no sir don't pity yourself abraham carried isaac and said up we go when he kept looking at us, Isaac, I love you, but this one. See, be careful. Some of us get too emotionally connected to every area of our lives that is difficult for us to get to the next level. You are emotionally connected to your money. You are emotionally connected to your title. You are emotionally connected to whatever. That's why it is difficult for us to give up things to go high. You are emotionally connected to your ministry my ministry the word of god works it is reliable this is how god has helped us by his mercy to be where we are today and this is how he will help us to rise but the key is that we engage the word the key is that we engage the word we don't sit down and make god responsible for everything and laugh around and fool ourselves that's not faith no that's not faith you must take inventory of your life you'll be surprised to know that this is not even my message this night i just came and this thing started boiling in my spirit god is my witness whom i serve that i am passionate about seeing every one of us produce results see let me tell you if you are a man of god and you are the only one rising 
you are you are a big failure doesn't matter what you whether it's car house no i rather fail as a person and you succeed your success will turn me into a success you see that let me be honest with you in all sincerity some of the things i teach you god has helped me in those areas so it's not like i'm teaching with any interest for myself i'm hearing a song in my spirit hallelujah thine the glory hallelujah amen hallelujah thine the glory revive us again hallelujah thine the glory hallelujah amen hallelujah thine the glory revive us hallelujah lord i want to become a public speaker you dropped it here you have not engaged the word you found a scripture but you have not done anything with it lord i want to become a man of god and the only thing you are thinking about is starting a church you know sometimes sometimes the way the way we pastors behave is why we keep struggling forever brothers and sisters if you have eight days to cut a tree use seven days sharpening the knife use seven solid days stand in the sun and sharpen the knife i promise you you will hit that tree once and it will fall but you can carry a blunt knife axe and even if they give you 90 days the tree will not fall hallelujah don't jump into things take out quality time to engage this thing engage this thing god is calling let me use you promise come god is calling promise into ministry for instance go and start a ministry in delta or start a ministry in u.s and the, the only thing he does is just says wow i i have learned enough you just jump and go to delta and after five years you are still roaming around as if god didn't call you in that five years those who engage the world are swimming in grace whereas you are there frustrating the grace of god after 10 years you now leave it and say you want to go and join military or police they say your age has passed you now say you want to join something else and your life and you blame god and god says no you refuse to engage the word i told you time never changes anything it only reveals time reveals whether you have been engaging properly or you have been wasting your time but god calls this guy now and he sits down lord what kind of ministry are you giving me Oh, this is this and he's studying he's learning he's building how do we do church finances in a way that you don't play pranks on people he's learning how do we build membership when members cross 500 how do you manage them you are learning how do I grow in the anointing when I have three to five sermons to preach every week how do I manage it with my family life what if I have a business running how do I manage it this gentleman works on himself i tell you he gets up and in one year start a ministry and all the forces that should be there are there everything done whereas another person is struggling and angry now this is anger is usually a product of frustration when you try to do things and you are angry and someone comes and it becomes effortless you see one of the proof of mastery is how effortless you are when you when you execute your plans effortlessly how are you doing it and people begin to coin explanations i don't want to live a life of a failure i don't want to number one it does not glorify god number two is going to waste my time number three there are many people connected to me in the spirit and my failure is going to affect them and destroy them and tear their lives into pieces one of my greatest fears if i have any is to walk and 
to walk with God for a long time and then to find that the things I've believed are a lie. That's why I'm meticulous about the construction of my beliefs. Lord, what I believe about finances, is it accurate? What I believe about the anointing, is it accurate? What I believe about fasting and prayer, is it accurate? I'm not ashamed though. If at any point I find out there is a problem, I'm not ashamed. I, okay, Lord, let's look at this. This is what I used to believe. But now I'm seeing, I'm learning this. Wow, amazing. I'm growing. And you are just. Let me tell you something. There are many anointings to lift our family members, but it is at the mercy of their engaging. They only complain and insult. They insult every anointing that can bring them breakthrough. And they sit down and hope and wish they will learn. You will be surprised, and I don't mean to be sarcastic, you will be surprised to know how many people live within this vicinity who have never received of what God is doing. It will be shocking and surprising. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, the trouble is, you are the one who is the patient. Who cries, the patient or the hospital? Please talk to me. When the patient insults the hospital, does the hospital have tears? The hospital will, will be busy treating those who are ready. Is that true? Lord, I don't want to live my life as a failure. Results can be commanded. This thing has been done before. I'm not asking you where you grew up, whether it's in your village or whatever. I'm not asking what has happened in your life. Brothers and sisters, this anointing we talk about is God's own ability. But are we willing to engage it to produce the required result? Do it honorably and fail. And the Lord will do for you what he did for Peter. He held his hand and lifted him. This is how God brought some of us, my brother, my sister. It's not as if anybody signed and gave any guarantee and said, start ministry. If you need money, we'll support you. Start ministry. If you need members, we'll... no, 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 no. Engaging by faith. When people see the results, they trivialize it. Sometimes people just talk all kinds of things, but then they do not know that these things were engaged. Access is not enough. The word, the truth, the mystery, the principle, the revelation must be engaged. It must be engaged. It must be engaged. There is a part you have to play. Play it and watch God. Watch God arise for you. As a mighty God and turn things around for you. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? This thing does not take time. It just takes commitment. If I'm building a house, listen, and I have workers building a house for me and they are working, they start working by six and by night, there are those who do night shift and are working. Is that true? And there is another lazy builder. The workers come by 10, they close by two. Whose house will be built first? You see that now? The amount of commitment you give to this thing determines the result it will deliver to you. There is no way around it. I watch our fathers of faith and I'm surprised that with the kind of results they command, you still see them engaging this thing. They are winning it with all their heart. I was watching... A video by Dr. Paul Enenche and um, I'm saying this only because he said it. He was preaching this year at um, Bill Winston's ministry and the Lord's Garden the magnificent structure that they are building around the airport road in Abuja and he said just for the, the zinc alone just to cover that place they are spending 16 million US dollars zinc not building 16 million u.s dollars in a time of recession debt free now only a fool and a stupid person 16 million dollars 
will more than answer the request of many ministries times 10. And this is what is used for zinking. So a wise person says, this is the result I'm looking for. It is on earth already happening in someone's life. So what do you do? You follow them who through faith and patience, what did he engage? Because he was not born like that. As at 1999, God's servant, Dr. Paul Enenche, was in one room in Abuja. There were people who were in the houses, they are still there today. Because they didn't engage anything. As at 99, he was there with his wife in one room. And all of a sudden, rises to do something. There are people still there today. Brothers and sisters, if your life must change, it's not up to God alone. God's power is available. I have indoctrinated myself into being a responsible believer. That nothing will ever change. Just like that. Hallelujah. What are you doing in partnership with the word of God? Do you understand the principle and the mystery that connects your challenge or your desire and the outcome? Do you understand? Then if yes, are you engaging completely? The future will show the mysteries and the things that Koinonia is engaging. It's, it's, not, it's not something to blow trumpet and talk about now. But the future will tell what is being engaged today. You see that? Something I do not know is responsible for where I am. Something I know but have not believed is also responsible for where I am. Something I have believed but have not acted upon consistently is responsible for where I am. While you are seated, can you pray, cry to God and say, Lord, I repent. I've been handing over the responsibility of my results entirely to you. But now I have heard you. I have seen it very clearly that nothing will change by itself. Are you praying? Some of you are looking at others. Forget about them and cry for your destiny. Apostle, I graduated since five years ago. Nothing has happened in my life. Show me what you are engaging first. Let me see what you have done. I thought I would have a job. Who told you you would have a job? Just like that? Show me the mystery you engage and the mystery you are engaging. Keep praying. Show me what you are engaging. Apostle, I expected that by now I should not be begging for food to feed my family. Show me what you are engaging. Or are you just waiting for things to happen? Show me. Apostle, I expected by now that my ministry should be strong enough financially. Show me what you are engaging. Let me see it. Apostle, I expected that by now I should be flowing at certain levels of the prophetic, certain levels of the anointing. Show me what you are engaging. Sir, I expect that I should be established by now. I should have had a car and a house. Show me what you are engaging. Don't just wish for nothing. I've been coming to church. That's not enough. What have you engaged? Pray. Nothing will ever change, my brother, my sister. Access to truth is not enough. It must be engaged though. Access to truth is not enough. Apostle, I've listened to all your messages on favor. Wonderful. Have you done what was said in the message? Consistently. Have you done what was said in the message? Having the readiness to judge every disobedience if and only when your obedience is complete. Let's not turn God to a game player playing pranks and, and, and expect strange results. Pray. You don't commit 30 minutes to God, 30 minutes of your life, the remaining part of your life and you want to carry fire which God are we talking about here? 
prayer zero word life zero passion and hunger for spiritual things zero and you want to carry the anointing no sir no sir no sir no sir show me the time you commit to study show me the time you commit to sacrificing your sleep show me how you engage with the word show me the videos you watch show me the retreats the times alone that you spend with god and i can tell you why your result is the way it is it's not magic it's not magic it's not magic hallelujah listen to me you know let me say this honestly there are many men of god who see ministries that god has blessed with crowds like this and they do not know the enormous responsibility of pastoring thousands of people they think all about standing here sometimes you see me stand here let me confess and tell you truly most of the time i stand here most times i'm waiting on god is when i go back that i eat something there are times that the water you see me take here is the first thing that is entering my stomach as i stand i'm not saying that's what you must do after service you see me stand here to see people sometimes past 12. last week i went home to one don't want crowd if you cannot engage what is going to be there are we together now we want things without the responsibility attached to it you before you barely rest someone has woken you there is a challenge you when i came you saw me talking on phone and i called the protocol because they needed to respond to an emergency somewhere the people don't care that there is service listen let me tell you for every dimension there is a price i, I wish i don't know how to make you believe this thing if you are unwilling to pay the price please forget about the dimension there are levels of anointing that when it comes to your life the moment certain things are not done it will destroy you it's better for it to have not come believe what i'm telling you jonah 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 entered a boat and people they started losing things and when they were checking they said what is making this boat heavy jonah said i'm the one no if i were not anointed i would have slept quietly but because of what i carried you are suffering for something now there are levels to not pray for when you are not ready for certain sacrifices oh god open my eyes are you ready to pray for everything you see because you will see things that would disturb you you are about to rest and you see a plane crash you are about to rest and you see a car crashing somebody and if it happens that way god will call you and say if your eyes were closed you are free but hence you cried and said open my eyes it's not about prophesying you know there is a responsibility oh god make me rich let me be your distributor and god stands and says as you are leaving your house now carry fifty thousand. my people are in need of it yes sir ha. oh god you said you want to be my steward oh yeah carry it and somebody comes and while you're talking says give five thousand to sam there are two little children give all of them one one thousand and you are acting like a fool and god says that's how my distribution system works the day you are not interested i close the heavens as simple as that I see a lot of greedy people admiring blessed people and think that there are people for over two months your offering is 10 naira or one year 10 years you drink is five for life how much is five for life and then you squeeze as an adult working class you come to church with 10 20 naira and drop it and say but what are these young people doing are you joking brothers and sisters let me submit to you if you ever try to sow seeds like me it may kill you in one month i'm telling you this sincerely eh? lord make me a millionaire he says are you ready to sponsor 70 children say no no i don't want that oh god you gave me only two he says that's it whoever wants it my way must be ready to do my bidding hallelujah thine the glory 
Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Time the glory. Revive us. Is God speaking to us tonight? Stop claiming things blindly when there is no sincerity. Oh God, give me a give me an international anointing. Okay, do you have the grace to counsel to preach three five times a week? Can you be sleeping on the road? Can you be sleeping in the air? That becomes your new bedroom. Can you sacrifice that much? It's not all about putting water and clapping. It's a sacrifice. Let me tell you this. And I stand before the God of heaven. Thank God he's here. You are spiritual people. Less than 15% of my prayers is for myself. God is my witness. Less than 15% for myself. Father, bless your people. Change their story. A text message comes. Sometimes you don't see me reply your text message. It doesn't mean I don't pray over it. Do you have the sacrifice? Can people come to your house and you carry your last meal and give them? Everything. And then they don't tell you thank you. And God said it's none of your business. Leave the issue is between me and you. Please listen to me. Oh. These are the engagings. It's not just about honor. It's not just about sitting. I'm ready to be a man of God. Are you ready for the criticism? Everything about your life is an open book. Everybody criticizes everything. Can you sit down hearing people criticize you and still sleep sound? And get up in the morning. Some of you who are so sensitive. I think you stole my phone. How can I be the thief? And you are moving around. And you want to do ministry? You must be broken and you must be walked on by God. Is God speaking to us? This teaching is very sincere. Most of us see blessed people and just admire them. And I look at the greed that is in many people's lives. Greed. You can sit down. Somebody is saying, I've not eaten. There is 1,000 naira in your pocket. You say, go and meet apostles. A meet apostle, he's, he's, he, he likes giving, just talk to him and he will give you. And this is the person holding 1,000 naira. And you are saying, Oh God, when will you visit? And God, even scholarship you will not see for where are we together? This is how this thing works. So send 200 naira recharge card to your mother, you rejected it. Whereas somebody transferred 1,000 to you and God says, take 200. Say, how, how many? And it's not like there is an important discussion and God says, I'm watching your heart. You are not engaging this thing. Let me show us why we are really not getting results. Let's be honest with ourselves. Am I engaging the word? Cain got angry because of Abel's results and God said, no, no, this is not about Abel. If you do what Abel did to the latter, will you not get his results? Hear me. It doesn't cost God to raise help for you. There is something we are not doing that is keeping the heavens closed. There is something a man of God is not doing. That's why his ministry is not growing. There is something a father, a mother, a brother, a sister is not doing. That's why we are perpetually in lack and suffering and penury. Every guy that comes to me lives in two weeks. Five guys have come. Sister, calm down. Could there be that there's something you are... No, no, no. There's nothing wrong with me. Yeah, I just happen to have bad luck with stupid guys. Five of them stupid? That means something in you is attracting them. Because you draw your kind to yourself. The body of Christ likes passing blames. We blame witches... We blame pastors, we blame government, we blame our parents. Let me tell you, your miracle starts the day you get a chair or go behind one tree and sit down. I'm surprised seeing many gentlemen, their lives are not moving, they are not doing anything. 
After Koinonia, you are just looking at any sister. Who can I now marry you? This one, that time is going. And there's nothing happening. You see what we are saying? A gentleman who will go and sit down with a biro and your Bible and a tape recorder. Shakatokata. Lord, it can't be this way. The word of God is coming every day. Why is my life like this? I am 31. I am 35. I am 40. I'm seated. I, can, I have to beg for Gary. Lord, I love you. Something is wrong. And all of a sudden, you come there. Your friend is calling. Say, leave me alone. No, you better leave me alone. Say, is this your, did you renew your DSTV? Say, don't near my house. You have been deceiving me for many years. And you sit down and all of a sudden the word of the lord comes this sitting down is what we don't do we stand up moving around this hustling life pillar to post one thing is needful sit down first stand up as instructed don't move around just like that it see the labor of the fool the engaging of a fool weary at every one of them because he doesn't know the road to the city not every action is profitable it is the action that is done in obedience and through understanding apostle i'm anointed i'm surprised i organize a meeting and nobody comes there is something you need to know more about the anointing it's more than laying hands apostle people come to my church they receive miracles and go back that means there is something you need to know about leadership you have done well knowing about miracles but there is something you do not know about leadership please blast in tongues for one minute and say lord i'm tired of this level i'm tired of this level i'm tired of this level i'm tired of this dimension i'm tired of this face lift your voice and pray Lord, I know you are ever faithful. Pray. I take responsibility tonight. There is something I am not engaging adequately. Hallelujah. Please sit down. The Lord has brought before us several keys, mysteries, secrets that are responsible for certain outcomes. Brothers and sisters, it's up to us. There are lazy people waiting for others to enjoy, to engage it, then they enjoy the benefit. You cannot sit down and be dependent forever. Our little children should be the ones waiting. But an adult, oh, you know that thing they say in Hausa, Ale Baka Musamu. So while you are engaging, I'm resting. After all, you'll be too kind to leave me like that. The Bible says, right from the days of John the Baptist, even until now, the kingdom suffered violence. And the violent would take it by force. Someone who will say, No way, Lord, I will force what is my portion from the realm of the spirit life does not deliver anything to careless less as fair if it happens it happens no everybody who receives anything worthwhile are those who stand in life and force their own force it down this passive i know one day things will happen we are not angry enough that's why we have not broken the back of certain things in our life We are learning. I've shared with you. There are some of us, the reason why we are not getting results in our lives is because we ignore God. I've shared these principles. You don't ignore God and prosper, sir. 
okay, um, I'm a businessman. Me, I'm not into ministry. Ignore God and see. Ignore God and watch the devil rubbish your life. Many business people don't honor God. They honor business. They honor men. But they don't honor God. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. How many people start working and they, they don't have time for God? Time for the house of God? No. Time for the things of God. I'm a bit busy. Lord, you know that I'm, I'm engaged. And God says, hey, you are engaged. And then the devil comes to rubbish your life and your work. One sickness arises and just destroys you. Somebody in your office looks at you and says, let me see how you will rise to the next level. And that's, it is they that know their God that shall be strong and do exploits. To the fierceness in today's world does not require guessing about God. You must know God. Hallelujah. I've said it humorously. Only God can tell the number of charms and shrines and herbal places that have my names on their altars. Only God knows the people who project me as I sleep to make sure I don't wake up. This man you see is here for a long time. Very long time. Is that true? Yes. Some of us have refused. We have been drumming mental development. And we have refused. So we are mediocre where we are. It's amazing how when the word of God comes, people exempt themselves. Say, this part is not for me. This is the part for me. No, all scripture was inspired. How many? All scripture. God can be talking about mental development. And you can say, me, for me, I'm a man of prayer and fasting. Leave that one for um, um, mental development. All those who want to become professors and lecturers. For me, this is a vineyard. And you are there and you find out that because your mindset is thinking wrong, regardless of your results. L listen, being around the truth and not engaging it can destroy you. Because it will bring about familiarity. You are familiar with every man of God, every program, everything. Yet, it will not bless you. Those that were close to Jesus ran away. They were not getting anything. Nicodemus came and met him once in the night and received something that changed his life. Mental development. Mental development. Upgrading your mind. Expanding your capacity to be relevant in today's world and grants you the opportunity to glorify Christ. How about people who do not understand authority? This is the mystery they have not engaged. And that's why the devil whips them left, right, and center. Left, right, and center. They have no honor, no regard for anybody on earth. Some of our parents are like that. Like that. Just say, hey, so, so man has come to town. Which man? So why are people going to go and see him? What's the spell? You see, you see? And, and they start debating it. And the person debating is poor and broke and sick and suffering. He does not know that it is for this cause. Many are weak. Many are sick. And many do sleep. He sits down there and a miracle is close to him. Sometimes in his neighborhood. And he hears Reinhard Bonke preaching and laughs. He says, ah, is that the wise man you were talking about? What is this one? He says, they said, Baba is about to pray for the sick. Well, I don't mind those people. And his kind of case is what is being called. And they are being healed. And Reinhard Bonke will go back. And the proud man who does not understand authority sits down there. Look, the way we have cheated ourselves because of ignorance of the systems of God. Cheap victories that have been complicated through ignorance. Look at students here. You heard the testimony of one of our ladies last week. No school fees, no nothing. And then result comes out and you are graduated. Ha <laughs> ba.
there are some of us where our lives are the way it is because there is no excellence to anything we do we are born again but everything is mediocre everything everything average mediocre local champions i'm a tailor like who well i'm, I'm here i'm patching here and there i lord i need increase and god says increase your capacity be excellent be excellent so that you can now start making clothes when you make a millionaire's clothes you get a millionaire's reward when you make clothes for somebody who gives you 500 today 200 tomorrow 800 today to pay 3000 and you are arguing as if arguing and arguing and fight and forgive the person but you still suffer you get tired and say lord i've started i've left this level i've challenged us who has been excellent hallelujah excellent some of us relationships this is the mystery we are not engaging we know it but we are not engaging it hallelujah relationships honorable is here um I, I don't mean to embarrass him but this man of god that you see forget that he's a politician i told you politicians are my friends i'm intentionally friends with politicians because whoever controls power controls what happens i'm not one of these these foolish people that throw away politicians away they are my friends they are my friends they are my friends yes they are my friends hallelujah Jezebel wanted to destroy the people in the land of Elijah the first thing she did was to marry the king to make sure she was at the seat of governance then she now pushed her and said oh yeah wait I'm the one in charge see that a true apostolic grace must be able to minister the life and the power of God even at the level of governance I went for Mubi Crusade, and Honorable is here. Do you know, brothers and sisters, this man, as great as he is with his status and all of this, he came for the crusade with his wife, stayed like two days together, and returned back. When I go to Yola, sometimes with his own car, carries me in his own Jeep and drives around. Praise the Lord. Relationship. If he calls me and says his wife is having a headache, and you call me. <laughs> there, there were calls. But let me show you how I will respond. Relationship. That's what brought Dorcas back to life. When Dorcas died, she was a woman who, well, she said, I can't preach, but I can sew. Madam, you are cold. Let me make sweater for you. When she died, the widow said, no way. These wicked men, they are all preachers, but they don't take care of us. You better raise this woman back to life for our sake. Hallelujah. Tomorrow, if he becomes a governor, I'm still his friend. Is that true? Yes. Access. That's why when he comes like this, we honor him. What is all this? Everybody is equal before God. It is true based on your understanding. System that we do not know that destroys us and rubbishes our lives because we do not know. Are we together? Yes. Relationships. I told you the easiest way to rise in life is relationships. Everything money can pay for, relationships can pay for it. If you use money to pay for everything in life, you are not wise. There are things relationships should pay for. You can't pay for the house, but a relationship can give it to you. I, I spent time um, the week before last to talk extensively on relationships. I'm not going to go back, but please listen to that message. I can spend my time talking to you about relationship. That's what happened. John the Baptist had the privilege. His mother, listen, John the Baptist did not study what happened around his birth. When Mary received the prophecy of the angel, 
she knew it was a strange thing she had to search for another woman who had a strange experience like her to be able to relate with her and she found out she had the gist of elizabeth and how john came and when they met their baby slept when john was born he was older than jesus six months of course at the wilderness there when he met jesus for a while he was walking with jesus but offense came in because some of Jesus' disciples left and became his disciple. And he left and then he now went trying to look for relevance. He went and started lambasting Herod. Because he did not know the protocol of the palace. He thought that the palace is the same thing as the wilderness. The way you speak in the wilderness is not how you speak in the palace. There are principles, old preachers, that rubbish themselves in high places. And they call it speaking for Christ. There is the wisdom and intelligence. When Paul was in the Jerusalem council with the Sanhedrin, he spoke as a Pharisee. He said, look, 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 look. I can speak as this and that, but look, now, there are Pharisees, Sadducees. Let me bring a point of divide. I'm speaking based on my authority. I'm a Pharisee. Spoke about the resurrection and that place caught fire. Relationships. Many of our parents today know too many people to be looking for house at their age is that true they didn't raise anybody they didn't lift anybody all their friends are successful people they watch television and tell you this guy was my friend do you know that uh, general buhari was my classmate do you know this one was my classmate do you know that kofi and Nan, we drank tea together oh god why have you not been there? what has that relationship done for you this is why when we do things in church like turn to one another and give them a nice hug and you are frowning the this investment you are making now of rejecting people will be waiting for you in the future you will see the person you frowned at in power and glory and now you will not have the same access again it is cheaper now than later you've heard me say we will all be great but the greater part is that we will all know ourselves. That's the most important part. So that what I do not have, a Jimmy can give me at a platter of gold. Hardship. Because there is no relationship. Hardship. Because there is no relationship. As a ministry by the grace of God, God has helped us to enjoy certain privileges with people, with institutions, because of relationships what have you refused to engage that is punishing you and is destroying you what have you refused what do you know and have been wishing will work for you but you have not engaged it truly hallelujah it's one of the things I respect a lot about my dad. My dad understands relationships in a strange way. He knows almost anybody everywhere. If he's a policeman, he will scroll down. There has to be one policeman he gave bag of rice some years before. If it is prisons, if it is customs, if he's a carpenter, even if it's a truck he does not have that stops. He knows a mechanic somewhere. He knows the one that fixes Peugeot. He knows the one that fixes this. Relationships. Now, it's costly. That's a very busy life. But it's only busy until the day you need those people. One call. And they tell someone else, yes, sir. But another, you keep knocking forever. And you say, God, help me. God, I helped you since. You misuse the opportunity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What have you been paying for that relationships would have paid if you engage them? How long will you continue hating people and talking about them as though you are going to live in this world alone? How long are you ready to continue holding grudges? When will you forbear and excel? There are ladies over my dead body, my mother, I will never talk to her. But the blessing in your destiny is in the mouth of that woman. Justified she did something wrong. But can you ignore everything so that you step into another dimension? Hallelujah. 
I'm passionate about engaging the word. I am passionate. I studied the life of Job because I want to be very prosperous. And I studied his life. I saw things that Job did. That if Job died poor, God would have been a wicked person. I found treasures. I said, ah, this is what Job did. Not the obvious things we see. There were things that Job did. What are you doing? Some of us, these are little children. They never look at you and smile. They look at you and they are afraid. You call them children. Remember, you are not going to die young. You have received the anointing for long life. The children you laugh at today, you are only 10 years older than them or 20 years or 30 years. They will soon grow and become adults too and occupy positions of influence. And you will see that a mistake you did 30 years ago will haunt you and your children and children's children. Is God giving us wisdom? These are, these are the systems that we, these are these are these are success systems. These are success systems. I'm I'm challenging us. This engaging part is what came in my spirit today to talk to us about. Engage the word. Engage the word. Engage the mysteries you know and stay there. Stay there till it produces. Don't engage once and complain. Do you know there was a time in my life I did everything but there was no result? Everything to be done, I cross-checked and it was correct. Once you have done everything, leave God's part to him. So when people are complaining and say, Apostle, what am I missing? I say, you are not missing anything. Just stay there. Just like that, yes sir, stay there. God is watching your growth and he knows that if those blessings come, you don't have the spiritual capacity to take it yet. So he keeps you. And then overnight, you wake up and step into a dramatic dimension of the anointing. And they say, where did he come from? He's always been there waiting. I've been sowing seeds. Continue. Says not to be weary in well-doing. For we will reap in due season. There is a due season if you fail not. If you fail, the due season will come and pass. And you will not see anything. I will never stop sowing seeds. I will sow like a madman. Until the day the harvest comes. I will never stop engaging my passion for God. I will never stop building capacity. I will respect every man of God and every authority that is producing the results that I'm not producing. Never will I open my mouth to talk about somebody who is producing results that I'm not producing. It's pride of the highest order no matter how simple and how cheap they sound they are engaging something that is producing my results i have a meeting next year and god has granted me the privilege and i'll have the privilege to be meeting with i think maybe for the first time in my life one of the billionaires in the world in Nigeria, I look forward to that meeting. I'm preparing for it like I'm writing jam. He said, Apostle, for what? This dishonor we carry is why we never rise. If I sit down with a billionaire and he talks to me for five minutes, I will go down on my knees and say, Thank you, sir. Because it will change my ignorant mind for God's sake and deliver me from the things that have pegged me and my lineage at certain levels i look forward to that meeting i've been praying and fasting about it i say lord this meeting cannot be once we have to be friends we have to be what yes because a friend sticks close to, than a brother this brother sister thing friends Hallelujah. I know we think it doesn't matter what I just said. Look at our lives. Look at our families. Are you not seeing the rules we have broken for ages? God is faithful. Our lack of understanding his system is what is punishing us. Apostle, why are you teaching all this? So you can serve God. Let my people release them from this pain so that they will go and serve me. 
I want they are for as long as they are working in the farms, for as long as they are suffering in Egypt, they can't serve me. Say, let my people go so that they will do what it is my desire to see some of our brothers a few years from now. That when others get up in the morning and are running helter skelter, you are there with your family. You made a way. That's the worship song playing. When our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over, you made a way. And visitors come to your house discussing survival and you are discussing kingdom. We have allocated 10 million to this ministry. There is a mission agency. We heard that these people are passionate about souls. And they say, are you a pastor? He said, no, I'm just a brother in church. I have been trained that my entire life is about a, the kingdom. He said, are you, you, you better stand up and make ends meet. I look at continue. I said, no, not in this house. We have demarcated this house through understanding. Exempted forever from certain things. Someone comes to your house and says, what's that noise I'm hearing? Say, we have a vigil today. Say, ah, which prophet is coming? Say, no. Priesthood. Our house. We have vigils. Say, are you not aware that uh, you have to rush? Say, no, no, no. God is faithful. God is faithful. And you are praying. And they say, what are you praying for? Souls. Say, ah, what about, uh, what about ends to meet? Say, ah, God, God, as we settled that long ago. This is, in this house, it is kingdom. Do you think this is possible, what I'm saying? You better believe it. Otherwise, you will be another angry person. This is what I want my life to be all about. Let no one deceive you that your whole life should be spent looking for money. Then serving God small on the way. It's a curse. Did you hear what I said? It's a curse. You can live a happy life where you sit down and teach your children by yourself because you have time. Junior, come. Daddy is about to teach you how to tithe. Have your envelope. Have your own. You put your own one million dollars. The young boy put his own hundred dollars there. He's learning how to tithe. Daddy, what do we do with this? Son, this is called the law of open heaven. Say after me. And he murmurs whatever he says, but he's learning. By the time that child is 10, he's a millionaire by himself without your influence. And one day he says, Daddy, I was sleeping and I had a voice. And the Lord told me to donate half of my wealth to a mission agency. He says, son, do it fast. Because his father has understanding. Do it fast. Daddy, I thought I was going to become a doctor. But I had a voice in the night saying I'll be a great man of God. Don't worry, you are covered. Not this morning ceremony. Says, so you are going to the vineyard now. Who is the sponsor? No, that's, that's the mindset they carry about preachers. The moment you say you are preaching, people just look at you and they, they have a valedictory service for you into a life of pain. No, sir. Hallelujah. One day you get up and carry your family. Where are you going to? We are going for a Hillsong conference in Australia. You mean it? Yes. Yes, sir. We are going there and we are sitting down. He said, you mean this is how your whole life? He said, this is how it is, oh. I don't know about you. I so thank God I'm a man because you can design the life the way. Ladies, don't feel bad. Just, just pray. That's, that's it. <laughs> I will never spend my life bowing to the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. No, sir. No, sir. Hmm. How can I call on your name? And end up in shame No way No way How can I bow down before you And then bow down before a man No way Because you are my God Men may not believe it. They think we are jokers. But you are my God. You are, you are, you are, you are. You are my God. 
Romans chapter 8 and verse 18 may round up it says for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time brothers and sisters I am not unaware of the pain you are going through I'm not a fool I know that there are constraints there are pains that you are going through but my Bible greater than any constitution of any republic the Bible says for I know I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory doxa that shall be revealed the weightiness of God in us in us the Bible says for the earnest expectation of your family of your lineage not just of creation listen some of you are listening to me and the devil is telling you don't mind that man it has never been done in your lineage go and study it and God says you are the one I'm raising on. I'm raising you to make a spectacle to principalities and powers that causes can be subdued that yokes can be broken listen God is looking for men that he's looking for a generation he said this is the generation that seeks thee let me tell you there is a generation that will seek God as a vocation not now there are individuals there are churches but there will come a generation an age range where what they do is to seek God church services every day every day not just on Sunday as one convention is finishing another one is starting and you can attend it because you have conquered the forces that keep men busy bowing down to the status of Nebuchadnezzar what to eat what to wear that's what drives people to walk in the morning you are supposed to walk but the purpose is not just make your ends meet it's a revelation of the glory of the father disabuse your thinking from this servitude mentality God wants to raise us but it will happen by engaging his systems lift your voice and begin to pray Lord I exempt myself 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 through knowledge shall the just be delivered there is a generation that will serve God there is a generation that will seek the God of Jacob not seeking money not seeking power we will conquer wealth we will conquer all the things that distract men so that the only time that will be left is in advancing the course of the kingdom and improving the living of men pray listen i look forward to times where our doctors will set up hospitals that are 10 times the size of shika and everybody who comes half the price was already covered by a kingdom financier yes sir for a hospital not a church not a church you meet someone and there is a surgery happening that person is about dying because they don't have money here comes a kingdom financier what did you say is happening i love god and i love his creation too much please treat the person listen let me tell you this please don't ever think i'm just making noise this is prophecy it will happen you 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 may throw yourself out but it will happen hallelujah a time in the history of the church where there are men who walk to reveal the glory of God they are so blessed they don't discuss money again hallelujah I heard about the net worth of one very funny person like that and the thing pained me because I read an article about a church that was building their cathedral and the amount was so meager 
they borrowed loan from a bank and the bank was harassing them harassing the pastor they wrote all kinds of things and insulted the man and they said the man plunged into depression and died i think it was last week or week before last when i had that thing it pained me i said in the vision god showed this guy death was not part of it all it was something that killed this man yet there is someone answering the kingdom of darkness and has more than 100 times what that church is praying for please don't tell me that is the will of god get up in the morning you are doing this job today you are doing this one tomorrow god calls you say sorry god i have to pay my child school fees no sir some of our parents may not have gotten it right we don't have to mock them but you have to stand and say lord for the sake of my children i will pay this price lift your voice and pray lord i pay the price if my father if my mother knew better they would do better but now that i know this oh god i will pay the price i will pay the price lift your voice i will pay the price no joking with my life i will pay the price i will pay the price Lift your voice and pray. Engaging the systems of the kingdom. Not only believing them. Not only having access to them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to lift your voice and cry. That the spirit of disobedience. The spirit of spiritual laziness. That does not allow you engage the word. You just keep wishing. No, no, sir. No, ma. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, the grace to put the word to work. Lord, I confess I've not been a faithful title. Pray. I, I stop playing games with my destiny tonight. Lord, I confess my prayer life has gone down. My word life has gone down. Lord, I confess I'm not serious with my destiny. As a gentleman, God has called me into ministry. But I'm not giving it the attention it requires. They're admiring people, fighting people, gossiping, and trying to make a name for myself. I settle down with destiny. 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 hallelujah listen let me give you a little assignment when you go back home tonight i want you to write specific goals things you are doing this issue of doing everything <clears throat> i'm on a mission to rising financially i'm on a mission to knowing god i'm on a mission to accessing the healing anointing don't just study randomly and move. no write things the lord is calling me into ministry and he told me the ministry is starting february next year but from now till february i am engaging this i need to know the mystery behind speed i need to know what keeps members you write it and sit down i've, I've not been faithful in tithing that means i've not had a revelation about it if the issue is not just to carry money and start running the issue is to sit down and say this month i'm going to take a course i'm going to take a study on it who has written books in this area and you sit down who has done a very comprehensive balanced not hungry manipulative teaching on it and you study that's how you grow you carry your issue of concern put it before you close your eyes to every other thing until that mountain crumbles don't leave it that's how winners work but all this one of try today if it's too hard you turn this direction you will still meet it there stay there and win did you hear what i said stay there and win let me tell you in my little life i can tell you there is no mountain that is not surmountable it's a lie don't listen to anybody that talks to you like that is not your friend don't go near them again i want you to write a list of the mountains before you pray dance but sit down there's got to be a way there's got to be a way. You read a book. You check something. There's got to be a way. Then you enjoy the beauty of triumph. 
brothers and sisters triumph is sweet when you conquer your challenges you live as if satan does not exist there is such a realm it is my desire with all my heart among other things that god will bring not just this ministry he has helped in a measure not just me but every one of us not just to a level of spiritual awakening i am trusting god for an avalanche of do you know how you conquer poverty like you put it under your feet this is what god will do in this ministry and with people and you watch people serve god all this obsession for money that runs people to hell ladies marrying for money brothers doing this people leaving god for money all kinds of nonsense and we can focus on god then there will be prayer altars afresh that seek god for him not for what he can bring there will be men and women who can study there are some of you there are books locked up in your spirit for nations but suffering will not let those books come out because all you are thinking now is oh god let me just look for something to eat we depress ourselves and have high blood pressure to death whereas there is a way a noble way where you spend your life at the end of your life like david you say like like um paul you say i have fought the fight good fight i have finished my course you have poured yourself like a drink offering nothing left again are we together the last prayer point and we're done for this night i like you to cry and say god hold my hands and insist that i don't stop until i get to the desk the place of destiny hold my hands i ask you to he held the hands of peter some of you in your in your in your in your quest to obey god you have seen things no dive in your life cry and say lord hold my hands hold my hands hold my hands oh god stop me from sinking and lift me up use my life as a spectacle to show what you can do with the anointing to show what you can do with influence to show what you can do with men and women who are passionate about agenda I will search for you and I will find you I will find you with all my heart I will lift my hands to you in worship and I will worship with all my heart I'm leading a generation to seek him Lord we will search for you and we will find you we will find you with all our hearts we will lift our hands to you in worship and we will worship Up. before I make the altar call listen to me I want to encourage hold on guys I want to encourage every brother here you are a brother when you go back home this night please please do this go and get a notebook sit down use this weekend please thank God there, there's there's holiday today tomorrow Sunday even if it's one hour please just do what I'm asking you to do find somewhere alone everybody say alone not with your neighbor not group find somewhere alone whether it's one forest somewhere or outside near one tree one dam somewhere and just sit down with a notebook and a paper don't carry any book just go and stay there and say holy spirit i'm rededicating my destiny not my life to you you are the only one who can help me this ministry you are giving me this business this life this family is too much for me i am ready to receive your wisdom and you it will shock you what god will do for you in that retreat don't do it sitting in your room or your parlor no 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 find a place go somewhere if you see someone there find another corner somewhere one grass somewhere one uncompleted building of a school somewhere 
just hang around somewhere even if it's for one hour take a time of inventory the way i'm living my life am i going to make it are we together this is called self-supervision sit down the way i'm running my family are we going to rise this way the way i'm living my life am i going to be great this way the the time i am giving god will this time really birth his glory in me and then come up by the spirit with resolutions the lord will show you areas the lord will show you things ladies you can do it too i'm not saying it's, it's just for guys and then ladies lazy around this is everybody's destiny carry a notebook flog it out somewhere let me tell you the second thing i want you to do please hear me and don't be offended with what i'm telling you you have to search for the names and numbers of certain people and delete them out of your phone i repeat you have to search for the names comma and the numbers of certain people and do what delete them out of your phone i promise you being a friend of everybody will not give you your destiny are we together there are people who are not bad they are not demonic but they are too distracting to accommodate them their, their, their distraction to your destiny is not worth it. Let them be. The day you rise, you can always recall them. But for now, you are on a project. Some of you may need to trust God to get a place, whether off or get a small room with somebody. You, you just need to pay whatever price it will take to allow you to build this great destiny. Are we together? Yes. some of you may need to minimize certain useless visitations visitations that don't make sense from pillar to post flying around no some of you may need to minimize movies i'm not saying movies are wrong don't don't misunderstand me but let me tell you you are not going to spend your whole life watching movies and you make it in life no sir is that true some of us may need to minimize sleep 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 snore your way time is going but this is Bible say a little sleep a little slumber a little folding of the and poverty comes upon you like an arm bandit some of us may need to minimize food please i'm not saying starve yourself don't get me wrong but i'm telling you gluttony is killing some of us killing some of us some of us need to reduce your three phones to one the two are not doing anything they are distracting you distracting you some of you need to reduce the number of social media platforms except you are there maybe on business or something you are on every social media platform your phone is beeping per second per second some of us may need to off our phones that's what you need for that one two hours off it there is nothing that is too urgent off it and spend time with god These are the things that distract people who have potentials of greatness. The Holy Spirit wants to make greatness out of people, but we keep getting distracted. If you can pay this price, I praise you. You may not like me now for what I'm telling you, but tomorrow you will see me and say, thank you, sir. The person who loves you is the person who tells you the truth, no matter how uncomfortable. I love you too much to leave you the way you are. There is a level of anointing you must enter. There is a level of influence you must enter. I want God to do business with you. That he, you will rise to become a voice for his majesty. This is what he's looking for. Father, we give you the glory tonight. You have challenged us tonight. This is more than a sermon. This is the heart of God pounding on your destiny. The Lord is challenging us very truthfully and seriously. Tonight, there are ladies and gentlemen, men and women standing here. Whilst you heard me teach, the Holy Ghost began to speak to you that you need to correct your life and run to Jesus. Now, please, everyone keep standing. No movement. There are people in this place tonight that are saying, Lord, I need to run to you. Perhaps you are coming here for the first time. And you have always laughed at men of God every time they made altar calls. The Lord is speaking to you that tonight is your own turn. Or at one point you have given your heart to the Lord. 
but things just went haywire your life scattered and you joined it and just you know destroyed the path of glory that you were following followed friends followed every kind of thing made a mess of your life and you are saying man of god can he receive me back absolutely and tonight wherever you are our time is gone i want you to take a bold and a serious step a bold and it must be serious you must come here meaning it from your heart wherever you are inside outside please i'd like you to make that bold step right now and come up even as we appreciate them quickly quickly lord i'm tired of playing games with my life you're welcome quickly let's clear the way for them as they are coming please encourage them encourage them apostle i've always been a nice guy it's just that i can't remember making this altar call join them join them i'm not sure my father is a pastor i've grown in a pastor's house join them join them please join them whether i overflow one two three wherever you are join them god bless you apostle i don't want people to see me forget about that please join them and come join them quickly keep coming above him there's no other jesus is way jesus is the answer for the world today please allow them come if they are coming keep coming above him there's no other if you are still joining them please rush and come those of you who are here i truly congratulate you with all my heart i know that you are standing here some of you are handing your life over to jesus for the first time some of you are rededicating your life it doesn't matter let me tell you jesus is not a religion jesus is not an opinion he is life he will truly give you a new beginning hallelujah now lift your right hand and say after me very clearly say lord jesus say it again lord jesus i love you with all my heart i come before you tonight just as i am i ask you to forgive me to cleanse me to give me a new beginning i declare that you are lord of my life you are my savior you are my king I receive eternal life tonight into my spirit and I declare that from tonight I'm a child of God I am saved I'm delivered in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted Lord Jesus who but you is able to save men who but you is able to show mercy and grace lord i decree and declare that these ones who have come unashamedly standing before you and standing before your people let this be a new beginning for them in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven and i declare that the power of satan sin hell the grave is broken over your life i decree and declare that the grace to live a victorious life the hunger for god and for the things of god is planted in your heart tonight from today you will go higher and higher and higher in the name of jesus christ thank you lord jesus i declare that the lord himself will bless and honor and lift you in jesus name i pray amen now um please all of you i want you to follow there is a gentleman that will be waving his hands um this lady my dear look at me you i want you to meet pastor alpha hmm? this girl while they are going meet pastor alpha please i want you to personally counsel this lady hmm? i saw something that please you counsel her and god will help you in the name of jesus christ god bless you please all of you god bless you